Hey everyone, as many of you have probably already heard, Jordan Isaka unexpectedly passed away last week and I want to talk a little bit about Jordan. I first heard about Jordan back in October 2013 and I actually remember this because he was one of the two protagonists in uh, Daniel Wynn's SEG Seattle Top 8 article where Daniel talked about their, their tournament crew, the Bold War Intimidators and how their battle cry that was coined by Jordan was cowards can't block warriors and how he, he learned a big lesson from that and especially that tournament. And while that article was hugely influential to me from everything I know and especially the reactions I see to Jordan's passing, Jordan himself was hugely influential to not only the people in, in Washington or, or the West Coast, but even online. He was a streamer, he was a commentator. He, I remember he did the RPL season four for us together with Josh, Josh Monks, whom I think he also commentated a lot more things with. And he was just like an all around good guy. I don't claim to, to know this firsthand, but if you talk to the people and you see the kind of reaction that Jordan inspires in people and sadly his passing now makes it all the more evident how much people felt touched by him and his positive attitude. And that kind of positivity reflects so much in the reactions I've seen online and in this a major reason I want to bring this up because this is this really reminds you or reminds me to enjoy the things you love and to make time for the things you love and to make time for the people that you love and how important that is. Jordan loved magic. Jordan loved white bordering his deck. He was very famous for that. He he loved brood war, which is a big passion that, that I share with him. He played up to to C rank of IC Cap. I actually found that on his on his Twitch page. Uh, <laughs> that's that's so cool, dude. I love brood war too. He he also loved baseball, which I don't even know the rules of, but something that just and, and I think you, you you guys know what I mean, right? When when somebody has passion and positivity about something. That's just incredibly captivating. And for as little as I knew Jordan personally, that kind of passion embodied, that that that's just him, man. And we will really dearly miss him. And as I'm coming, like as I'm, <laughs> as I'm saying all of this, I'm actually looking at a Facebook picture of Jordan, and that's probably my favorite picture. I've I've one of my favorite pictures I've seen of somebody playing Magic. It's just him sitting in a game star playing against somebody who seems to be, I don't know, like a 10-year-old kid playing a draft deck at best. And he's playing vintage, and they're both having fun. Like, <laughs> this, this, this is just amazing. They're sitting there, they're laughing. And, and Jordan commented, he wanted to play, so we played. And I just love the, the openness and the, the fun that both of those guys are having in the picture. And yeah... It's hard to take away something positive from somebody dying. That's that's not how it works. But the the inspiration stays around. And the inspiration sometimes even grows as you become more aware of what we as a community, not even to speak like of his closer friends and family even, like what we lost. And if we can keep that around, and I'm trying to do that for myself to to be more conscious about the stuff I love and the time I make for the things I love, the people I love, then that's that's something to take away. Jordan, you will be missed. But we will also remember, cowards can't block warriors.
<laughs> okay, oh, so we're just going to continue from here. Hello and welcome to Everyday Channel number 133, your favorite, most deceptively named bi weekly legacy podcast. Today's show is brought to you by our brand new Patreons, Brady Harrison and Gary Fox. Thank you so much for that. If you want to support the running of the show directly, you can support us on patreon.com slash everyday journal. Guys, fuck it. It's been the second time I forgot to press start recording. Why didn't no one yeah, notice we're, it? We're recording now, right? Nice. Yeah, we were recording for like an hour yeah. or something. So, no. Yeah, we recorded for like five hours. <laughs> for Actually, five two hours. days Everything. at least. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's all like gone. Our, yeah, like regular five-hour sessions. <laughs> yeah, people people actually don't know that we pre-record every day to run like two months out, so we can go on our like lavish lives all across mm -hmm. like the Caribbean, and, and then we come back and record like another five months. On the plus side, episode. you guys don't have to listen to Julian describe his life-size puppet of me. He has it at his workplace. He was just telling us about so uh. i promise it makes a little bit more sense in context but really not all that much more <laughs> uh, <laughs> guys what have you been up to it's been it's been a month since it's been the three of us together yeah so I, um i was sad to miss the last one of course uh but you guys covered it talking about like totally real black lotuses that are totally a good product and totally worth buying yeah i already have five easy yeah yeah <laughs> Kai, how, how many black lotus how many fake black lotus did you buy did i buy I, you can't buy it yet so none yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you, I mean, Callum is speculating. I could, at least, yeah, at, at least three. You know, I've got let's one just, in the queue. Let's get the whole place set, yeah. and one for vintage. <laughs> but there by the go. way, did you know that like premier level stores or whatever they call it, they actually literally get one for free, like an entire set of those uh, four booster packs? It's how oh, I didn't know. Keep, I... keep them WPN and not just going like screw you guys we're just running proxy events damn that's great yeah we should open a store then that, <laughs> yeah that's so yeah great. but it's very easy to get a like a premium wpn whatever store i think in germany does like two or three at best yeah. i was gonna mention that like you, you have like so many crit criterias you have to like fulfill and then like having like a proper bathroom for example like having like, oh yeah that's, chairs that's, and <laughs> that's like the hardest i think like the proper bathroom is like literally like the hardest part about all this because i have nothing to many magic store where, where like they have a proper toilet seriously this is, this is berlin talk seriously <laughs> it's like every like every time like because whenever you go to a like a card store like to, to play in a tournament like you all like obviously you want to wash your hands at, like i i want to wash my hands at least like four or five times maybe like you know between those rounds right but every time you have to go into like this little like shithole <laughs> like if it if, like it barely has like a door and the taps and, barely work oh man it's like hey do you guys have like like normal water please and it's like it's crazy <laughs> uh, yeah. the, like, I, I, like, I told this story before right do you guys know what was one of the reasons why our local our local hgs uh lgs right like the atm machine okay why our lgs stopped offering legacy events no. Because the legacy players kept crushing the toilet seat. Oh, <laughs> like, no. That's the dirtiest players of them all. Oh, you know, like that. <laughs> Nasty! <laughs> that was one of the three reasons they provided. And yeah, that, <laughs> can't really argue with that. Um, I mean, it either happens or it didn't. It's pretty valid. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they should have tried that yeah. yeah anyway where do we start kai what have you been up to you yeah so it's uh, not much but um lately i've been thinking about a new a new maybe like uh how, how do i how, how should i say that like a, a new identity you no know, like, like a like a tournament series of some sort so um so i was uh thinking about like a doing an event in my studio like where i stream um, it's not gigantic, but it can definitely host like up to eight people. And I was thinking like about like a Solataric Studio, like high stakes eight player legacy invite type of event, you know, where like eight players um, get at my studio and we're going to have like a full day, um, probably on a Saturday or Sunday, just like playing like, um, like legacy, probably like a like some sort of like a like a deathmatch thing, you know, <laughs> and there's going to be like food, there's going to be like drinks, there's going to be like good, like good music and, and like and toilets yeah proper toilets <laughs> i almost want to like invite a dj of some sort like to, to, to my apartment <laughs> the next you know? best thing to your toilet and like, <laughs> <laughs> and like strippers and everything you know i like, have some cameras on and to have like a good stream while we have this like getting dangerously close to our porn shooting yeah oh i didn't i didn't say that they should be naked <laughs> you know they can be like fully clothed <laughs> i okay. see but but like you know like a, some sort of like a a nice get together where like eight people show up um, it's gonna play a lot of legacy that day that's gonna be like awesome prices but also like decent food drinks like throughout the whole day and a stream and uh just like because i thought like the other day like what is the definition of a good magic event right and i think for the longest time i had this like misconception that um the more players the better but like lately i've been kind of like 
just like thinking like the opposite way. I was like, hey, um, I'd rather have like eight people, like let, let's say like 16 people and I have like everything like properly set up and so on. Um, rather than like having like 64 people, for example, and you know, that's going to be like, a lot, a lot of shit going on, you know? Um, Sounds uh, pretty cool. Yeah, I, I haven't really like, I haven't done it so far. And I think like, um, if I'm going to try, it's probably going to be in December that uh, the first one is going to be like a like a beta version of some sort you know that there might be a, a, a lot of like little like small mistakes and might you know things uh, you can improve um so i will do it with like eight uh, other seven uh, local like um legacy players from berlin and if that if all everything works out i might want to do one where people want to like fly in and i already saw that i pinched that um pitched the idea on, on twitter we got a lot of like good um feedback you know from people like andreas peterson from denmark who even said like you know if the um if the, yeah. if the high stakes are like even more then uh, he can you know i was gonna say if it's gonna be coming. andreas that he's gonna be like oh dude we right? need at least like 500 euro buy and otherwise i'm not gonna show up exactly like that sort of thing you know i i think like uh mark eric Vogt also um showed some interest which i think is really cool and some other people um but for everything to work um i i need to make sure that you know like everything is like properly set up there are like decent mics and and yeah and and, and all that all that but I'm, I'm pretty pumped about the idea because uh it's also in my apartment, you know, so I can do whatever the hell I want and no one can stop me. That's cool. Yeah, it sounds awesome. I'd love yeah. to, it's the kind of thing I'd love to watch. Just like, you could even do like a mix of formats or just do a legacy or whatever. Like, you could do so many cool things with it. Right. And okay. I think if, if, if your first one like d does really well, you'll get people like banging at your door to do more. Yeah, exactly. And like, and since since the, the stream is on the whole time, you know, we can also do just things like i don't know like uh, player interviews or just talk about like even like, about non-magic stuff you know because ultimately i want to just like become really good friends with like everyone who, who shows up right so my recommendation if you do something like that because it sounded like you want to play in that as well right uh yeah kind of yeah okay yeah i mean that makes sense um my recommendation would certainly be that you have at least one person who's dedicated to doing all the behind the scenes stuff like running the stream making sure that everything works Otherwise, it's going to be quite stressful. It's probably going to be way more stressful for you than you would imagine. Right. Okay, so if uh, anyone listening to, um, to, to this, um, <laughs> if, you got, if, you, if you got time in, like, in some time in December and you really, you really, really want to support something really, really cool, um, just raise your hand now. <laughs> I've got both my hands on the floor. Nice. Oh, <laughs> Close, like, enough. Dude, Close enough. No, but I think we, we, we talked about this, right? We I think we also talked about this on, on Facebook the the other week. Um, that for people who know StarCraft, they know Home Story Cup, and the way mm -hmm. you describe it, this is literally how Home Story Cup started out. And by now, there, there has been like I want to say like thirty four um, instances of Home Story Cup, and it started as exactly uh, like you described it, and then it, it kept growing and growing and growing to to being the super professional production. And yeah, I, I would love, love, love to see something like that. And uh, but I was going to say legacy, but really just like in magic in general, like if, if, if you have like interesting charismatic people and they play like a format I'm, I'm not super invested in, I might still watch it if it's just like entertaining. Oh, yeah. It so could also be all the more power to you. Yeah, modern, vintage, <laughs> oh, vintage any, dude, sign me that'd up. Be, you, you that'd be fly crazy. It. Like imagine like eight people like with like full power nine, you know, like just that'd be so cool. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you know what would be the most hype thing? Like the moment your apartment gets raided by, I don't know, some gangsters who know, oh, there's going to be like like two million in card stock in the, <laughs> oh in the apartment. Goodness. Let's get that. Oh yeah. Uh, don't you worry. I'm, I'm going to uh, lock the doors and uh, it's going to yeah, be enough. It's going to yeah, be oh, enough. And, you know, the know, criminals I'm are going to show up. They're going to be like, oh, the door is locked. Damn. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to shut the door. <laughs> Bust it again by this, uh, this one little trick. Security expert, uh, Kaiser Matari. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah. Keep, keep us posted about that. Um, um, I'd, I'd love to see that. Callum, what, what have you been doing? You you played a little bit of Magic, I heard. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot to say. This weekend just gone, so we're recording on Monday. We've just had the Axiom now, like, it's called The Gathering. Basically a massive weekend of a bunch of events. And it was the biggest weekend for UK Magic since, since the uh, pandemic, easily. Biggest weekend for Legacy, easily. It was amazing. Uh, so first, yeah. first of all, shout out to Axiom now for doing it. They are... As anyone in the UK will know and agree, it's just like matter of fact, they're the best TO and they like always look after the players. They have everything what's best for the players and they just always give back and their prizes are incredible. And so to see them do this is just, we were so lucky. So they had two big legacy events. So they had one on Saturday, one on Sunday. 
I think there was a multitude of reasons not to do like a a, a big two dayer, but essentially they were capped at one hundred and twenty eight players each day, and we almost hit cap both days, which was really cool. They nice. were very they were very worried that we might not hit cap and stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it was like one hundred and eighteen and one hundred and twelve players. Do you have a lot of players day. from other countries coming in? Not that many. We had uh, under ten, around five ish, I think. So we had um, Andreas, who is Delta. He's a magical line crusher. Oh yeah, he, he. I think he did. He win the trof trophy race yeah. the other season. Yeah. So a couple of seasons ago, he got thirty nine trophies, which is a crazy That's amount. Insane. Insane. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. So he's um yeah he hasn't been checked for Ano beats. Sorry. <laughs> oh no! As we said, that was a requirement. Yeah. Oh okay okay. Everyone, everyone had it. <laughs> We met Yanis, um, who top eight to GP Birmingham, uh, two thousand. Oh, sweet, yeah, seventeen ish. With like Grixis Kess, he came over with his friend as well. Um, I'd talked once twice with him, but it was really cool to meet him. Nice. Um, we went out drinking and stuff. So, how all weekend, big weekend events should start off. On Friday, we went out drinking, <laughs> and uh, Ethan, who is Boss Krenko, you'll know him by that. He used to go to a university in Birmingham, so he had like a whole beer run planned. So we got there like afternoon on, on friday we all took the friday and monday off and we went to like four or five different pubs Hell went yeah. to one that had like all belgian beers we went to one that was just very odd like a, a big place but like you had to go into a hotel and downstairs and blah blah but um <laughs> anyway it was good fun and we all woke up saturday morning nice and early nursing mild but definitely hangovers thinking yeah this is this is we're back to playing big legacy events again if you've got a hangover it's been um, a while right yeah yeah it has so also, Anders Thiessen came over, so he was there for both days. He came to London Thursday as well. He was like, no, no, I want to do well. I'm not coming out drinking, so this is my chance to make fun of him here. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, the setting was cool. So the venue was also was Edgbaston Cricket Ground, which is in Birmingham. So, wait, 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 let me stop you. You played at a cricket ground? Yep, that's right. Isn't that outdoors? No. <laughs> well, wait, cricket, isn't cricket, cricket is played out, outdoors? Cricket is outside, but you have a stadium around it. It's like baseball is outside, but you have lots of inside place inside. Oh, I get, I get yeah, it. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. So, so it was a huge rooms, and um, they also had so running alongside the legacy on Saturday and Sunday. They had like huge modern event on Saturday. They had a huge pioneer event on Sunday. To the to the good news for legacy players, like uh, Axie now said, legacy was like they over exceeded, and modern and pioneer kind of flopped. So sad to have them having a flop thing, but they are. Basically, they've said they're going to be running more big legacy events for us in the future. You, you know, amazing. when you think about it, um, that's why I asked you about uh, foreign attendance. Mm. You, f first of all, you would think, oh, there didn't, there, there weren't a lot of foreigners coming in. But actually, when you think about it, there's a lot of potential, right, for foreigners yes. to come in. Yeah. If you already hit the cap just with the local population, and this gets really big, and you know, maybe at some point it gets streamed in the future. I don't know if they're, when they're going to do it again, if they're going to do it again, and how they're going to do it again. But yeah. that, that would certainly be something that attracts even more people. Definitely. So, yeah, the, there was a lot of European interest, but in the end, like, it's it's coming over to England and, like, a month out or so, it's, it's a bunch of money and a, bit, a bunch of things. But we had had at least five or six people fly in for it, and they all left saying it was amazing. And, um, Sweet. yeah, the fact that we're getting, like, 120 people just with local, it's just going to grow as well. There's there's no way it doesn't. Like, it's probably going to have, like a, like, a proper legacy scene. Yeah, there's a really cool Brum crew that come down to our LLMs as well. Um, they have... Wait, they come all the way from Birmingham to, to central London for you? Yeah. Or, or northern London, I believe? Yeah, yeah, they do. Oh, they dedication. get so a couple okay. of cars and they come down almost every single time. So shout out to the Brummy crew. They are absolutely awesome. And they have, um, there's a big store called Manor Leak in Birmingham as well, where they do like legacy F&Ms and they run Winner Boxes Legacy like once a month as well. There's a good scene there. So I believe the next event is going to, they are going to do it. I don't know when it is, but they're going to do another one where they do a big legacy on the Saturday and they're going to do team like modern legacy and something else on Sunday. So mm -hmm. yeah, legacy is getting much more support from them, which is cool. So how, did, how was the event for you? What, what did you play and how did you perform? Yeah, so I played Painter. Surprise, surprise. Surprise. Oh, whoa. <laughs> oh that's crazy, dude. I know, I know. I did think about bring, uh, playing something else on one of the days, like maybe something more fun or like meme or whatever. <laughs> but I just thought, no, I'm just not going to. So I, I only bring Painter with me and like just a few with a few different cyber options. And I love, love, love the main deck I have at the moment. Um, the sideboard I changed a little bit day to day. I'll get to that when we talk about the second day. But um, 
myself and Jasper, who Jasper is um, he's like the mod of the Painted Discord as well. He's been playing forever. So what's his, his full name? Jasper Morrison Bowie. Ah, oh, yeah. He, yeah, he should like definitely be a name that rings the bell, right? Yeah. So when it comes to painter. Yeah, he uh, he won the first day as well. So we'll get to that shortly when we cover the top eight decks as well. But um, we played the same seventy five on the Saturday, and so I won't go into like too much detail of the matches because then that'll drag on forever. But basically, I played lands round one, which I won two zero. I uh, played nine depths round two, which I won two zero. Played eight ghasts round three, which I won two zero. And this was great because this was around mm-hmm. two p.m. And I just had really good goldfish hands, so it was over in five minutes. So I got to have like an hour and a half lunch break. Oh, well, nice. <laughs> then I lost round four, 0 2 to Ant, to the eventual uh, finalist. Uh, this Ant list we'll cover more later, but it was very cool. Uh, round five, I won against Moonstumpy 2 0. Uh, round six, I lost to Reanimator 1 2. And then finally, I played Nia Depths again, 1 2 0. So 5 2 finish, uh, not bad. I, I lost to two fast combo decks, which is basically my sideboard is four lane of the void four mind break trap four megas of the moon two fury and a pivot needle oh like, man you're crazy <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> it's a uh, like it's it's very easy for this deck because you have like as a saga and uh and a goblin engineer to like put loads of tutor targets and stuff but i'm like without khan because i don't play khan the great creator without khan you are le- weak to like the fast combo decks because you can't just um shut up leds with his ability or go and fetch a Mm-hmm. It's almost crypt game one and stuff. So despite the sideboard, like against Ant, he kind of I had the mind break trap once or twice and he, he got to the thought season them and still go off. But like I made him have them at least and I'm I don't yeah. know. Uh, you know what I'm wondering? Is there is there anything we could get off a saga that that helps you in the fast combo storm matchup? Where you basically like like you said, right? You have the mind break traps, they might buy like a turn or two, and maybe that's gonna be good enough to get you into saga uh, ultimate quote unquote. Yeah. Is, is there anything that comes like, to mind? I I don't think in game one I I should look back. No 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 in in game two like like a sideboard option I'm thinking. Yeah, so Saga only comes off turn three, so I think after that I think I might add either a Trinisphere or a Thorn of Amethyst to my sideboard. Yeah, I mean that's already mid game, right? Like like I think I think you're kind of looking for something that's like good on turn one or turn two, and Saga like the the, Saga is just like a really slow card. Yeah, but it gives you uh, five five copies of the card. That's why I'm I'm saying they get to maximize your your sideboard slots because you're already bringing the four mindback traps, and I always feel like. On very rare occasions, do you actually get somebody with a mind break trap? Most of the time, yeah. it's really just there to buy you time, that's... and you use the time to to get one of your five copies of whatever you would put in the sideboard that you can get off Saga. That that's my thinking, but I don't know if there's anything good. That's exactly my expectation for mind break trap. I very rarely am going to cast the card, but if, whether they, if they don't know about it, they might walk into it. If they know about it, they're still going to have to like they're going to have to duress or thought seize it. So it slows the game down and makes them counter it for those pieces. And I can still combo on turn three. So it is totally to try and buy time. But I think I need to add either a Thorn of Amethyst or a Trinisphere because you can go Goblin Well. Oh, engineer. engineer. Yeah, yeah. That's that's another way to, to so basically maximize uh, it. Oh. If, you, if you have both, that's faster than uh, Saga and then more effective. And you can still go turn one Engineer off like a little spell of Simon Spirit Guide as well. Mm-hmm. And then turn two, put it into play. So yeah, I think I, I, I wanted to add a Thorn. I didn't have one with me. So I think I want to add that. It could Sounds be a Trinisphere cool. as well. So yeah, that's that. Reanimator. This is why I changed my sideboard because I've been like I'm in R-ing over ley lines in the sideboard versus surgicals, and the problem with ley line is it's just like a quote unquote better card. It hits harder against the graveyard decks, but they're all bringing in like removal for your artifacts because you're you're playing painter anyway. So I got hit by serenity really hard. Uh, game two oh, yeah. actually, game two I played through two serenities and a wear tear, and I managed to just win. And he had like Grizzle Brown drew twenty one cards and Archons and stuff, but. Painter plays the board so much you could kind of dodge all their discards. So got there, but yeah, game game two was a uh, serenity pretty hard. But it was good learning. So for day two, I switched the four lay lines to um, three surgicals and a torpor orb. I mm-hmm. uh, started off two zero against Esper Doomsday. That was against Francis. Poor Francis. I know you can listen to this. <laughs> he played against Painter four or five times over the two oh days. My oh my god, that's oh the horror goodness. matchup, right? And, yeah, <laughs> dude, he, I feel so sorry, dude. <laughs> he didn't play Doomsday. Uh, day one, he played uh, Breakfast, and then day two, he played Esper Doomsday. Oh, you know Breakfast? I think that's actually a really cool deck. Uh, yeah, I think somewhat a... meme on it, but I think it's actually pretty good. I do as well. You know, I like I, cool. I've never met Francis, but it looks like like he 
every single deck he touches is Esper Colors. Is, is, yeah, that, is, yeah. that, is that true? Right? Because uh, I talked to him a little bit about an old school deck like a year ago, and he showed me, of course, an Esper <laughs> control deck in old school. It's like, okay, it's <laughs> like, I mean, he has a beautiful mana base, right? It's all, all like like uh, black border duels and all that. Yeah. It's like, damn, that's beautiful. And like, and now I hear him saying like Esper, what is it? Like, I think, didn't he play like an Esper Shark Typhoon control deck or the, I saw the other day? Uh, and like, let me put like a just guy stance. Oh, it's a just guy. Yeah, Fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, but blue, he, blue he really X. loves Esper and like he'll play blue white in basically everything. But then Esper is what the the combo decks kind of go to, right? But yeah, yeah well, was, I like that dedication. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He loves it, and you'll like this. He had four Triumph for Saint Catherine in the sideboard. For, what for Doomsday? <laughs> help, help us out again. That's the new card from yeah. from Warhammer Forty K. Yeah. What does I it do again? I think this card is absolutely sick it's really 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 not me wait, wait i don't i don't know what that card does i think it's so, a miracle card right yeah wait, so what? it's it's five mana five five lifelink and it's got a miracle cost for one and a weight so it can be a two mana five five lifelink and then um when it dies you can shuffle it into you take the top six cards of your library and shuffle it with them so the top seven and then it's just back there so the more of them you draw they just keep coming back and keep coming back and he said he like played against moon stompy and it's just completely unbeatable there and uh he played against madness the like hollow one and the vengevine deck with his five five life link and stuff i wonder if there ever uh, has been a pile where he just went like you know doomsday for four copies of no, whatever that, the card is that called. is his pile he, he makes four triumphs and then a, another doomsday so he's got two doomsdays he just loops with the five five life links wait but but he also has the the natural kill right it, it, just in case yeah 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 but okay. if, if there's like lock, if there's like lock pieces in play or like against a blood moon and he's got his oh, yeah. basic planes he just you know that's actually hilarious like imagine you, yeah. you, you're gearing up to you know i have my endurances i have my dress downs i have everything right. yeah come at me doomsday and then it's just like nope five five lifelink five five yeah. lifelink five five oh once again five five lifelink oh so lucky oh, man. And, and think about it, like so in doomsday you have stuff like street wraith which you can just cycle and then hit the miracle and stuff and oh you so you can you can basically like cycle it into it right away like yeah. play it at the end stuff it. <laughs> and there's like consider to help find it when it dies and in, in the top seven oh, again <laughs> oh dude that's not, uh, can, can we get a deck list from francis i, I want to yeah. link that yeah I'll, I'll ask him for it i'm, uh, I'm gonna put it in the show notes um in yeah. big red letters <laughs> Like I don't even know what to say, but like ever, ever, like ever since ever since like Doomsday became uh, like a st like a popular card and legacy, like people have been tra playing like way too many mediocre cards to uh, you know just 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 because they can. Oh, <laughs> you're go you're gonna eat those oh words when it comes to magical oh mind. Oh my god! It, like it, it kind of reminds me of like literally every single artifact being like you know just uh, a semi playable card for painter just because you have like eight um goblin. Oh, okay, that, that's that's feeling <laughs> my pain. Yes. The amount of like seven and eight drop big artifacts are like, can we play it in Painter? So, yeah, it's like literally yeah. every single one of them. Because like, because <laughs> like, because uh, you um uh, you mentioned like the um a good artifact against combo, and like the first thing that popped into my mind was like God Pharaoh statue, which oh, is like a, which is like, <laughs> which is like a, which is like this ridiculous six mana artifact, but it makes your spell, uh, your opponent's spell cost two more to cast. Or you could you just know? have Thorn of Amethyst, which you can cast turn one in your eight soul land deck, <laughs> or six soul land deck. Oh my God. But Callum, you, you could wait like five more turns and yeah. then cast that. Like, <laughs> just have patience, my friends, yeah. Okay, okay, fine. I'll have some patience against this fast combo sure. trying to kill me. <laughs> But yeah, I'll yeah I'll get the deck list. It's really cool. Um, the main deck otherwise was like four Strix, two to fairy, but then the rest combo pieces. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, but yeah, so he, uh, it's really really tough matchup for him. Uh, he almost got me game one, and then game two I just kind of had a really good hand as well. Um, next round I won two zero against Blue Zenith, and then o two in round three it gets Naya Stompy. So a lot of you will hear that and be like, what is that? So we'll get to that soon. Naya Stompy. It's it's mental. Yeah, <laughs> it's very much mental. Preview. It's one of the weirdest decks I have seen in literally years. Yeah. Do it's, well. It's the juice. Yeah. And little spoiler, it won the whole event. So we're gonna get to that soon. That makes it even juicier. Yeah, yeah. We, just wait for it, guys. Um, round four, I play against Sneak and Show, which is just nightmare fuel for Painter. It's like a fifteen twenty percent matchup basically. Um, I lost O two. I punted game. I, I punted game two where I could have won a hundred percent. I just didn't see a weird line until it was too late. But um, so it goes. It's 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 really hard. And I knew the guy, what he's playing already. So I was just super dejected when I started playing it already. Um, and then to close it out, I went 2-1 against Espervile. Uh, Fury is a good card. 2-1 uh, oh. against Reanimator. 
And then finally, two against Moonstompy. And I have to just highlight what happened in this game. Um, it was it was mental. Like so, it was. so game one, I start by going turn one Fable into turn two Fable. And I think this is like the perfect draw against Moonstompy on the play as well. But then I just drew lands, 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 nothing. And then I'm just like drawing some Goblin Welders and like just nothing to do with them. I've just like completely flooded out. And he played a turn two uh, Caves of Chaos Adventurer. So he's going to the dungeons and doing stuff. And I've no idea what's going on, to be honest. And <laughs> eventually, I have the... F- I'm, didn't you have, like, so, sorry to interrupt you. Didn't, didn't you have like a certain plan when somebody's going to play the card against you in paper? No. I thought you, you said something on one of the last episodes where you're just going to take the card and you're going to throw it off the table or something. Oh, fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I forgot about my plan. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> so... This game was not as fun as the second one. This one, like, the guy was genuinely just so excited to be going into all the different dungeons and stuff. He was having this, the time of his life. But he didn't quite know how um, Fable works when you have two of them. So what I was doing was using the Fable to copy the uh, shamans until they got to, like, seven treasure tokens. He then doesn't... Mm-hmm. He, he does... He advances board rather than playing really aggressively and pressuring my life title. So I get to eventually make, I think it was 16 fable tokens at the end of his turn so twinned him out and then got to untap and lethal him because he what whoa, whoa, whoa. Was... Uh, uh, help me out again what, what exactly did you do that you, so, you just so, like made oh because you so when you have because two I get fables haste. the mirror breakers yeah you yeah, can, yeah you can use one to copy so you do at the end of their turn because they they sacrifice at the end of a turn you copy one and then that that to, that copy you can copy it again and copy it again so I was I was actively playing out all my mana. So he knew I was empty-handed, but I had like 15 mana with my treasures and soul lands and pedals and stuff. And so I got to twin him out with like almost nothing in play. And he was like, huh, didn't expect that coming. <laughs> so, That's actually hilarious. That's, yeah. you, you Basically, you get to turn all your mana into into uh, two, two haste creatures. Yeah, yeah. So you have to do it at the end of your opponent's turn. Yeah, yeah. Token sacrifice. But essentially, yeah, you every one mana will become a 2-2. Two, two. You are a master of the stack, man. This is amazing. I, I wonder how many people have actually done that in an extra tournament. Yeah, it, it doesn't come up too much because those they just die on site because they have to, but and you have to have two live. But yeah, it's pretty fun. Um, <laughs> but game two, he played a turn one Keys of Chaos adventure on the play, which is for everyone. It's the five three the ETBs. You get the initiative. Um, luckily, I have a fury for it, so he doesn't just like completely snowball. But I. Um, messed up and did, I pitched a Goblin Welder to it because I didn't really have anything to weld out and I forgot that I could play it with a Seeming Spirit Guide turn one and take the initiative off him. So essentially what happened in this game, he went through the whole dungeon once, got to the end and then we had to call a judge like asking what happens he just goes back in again so he did it all <laughs> and then he just went back in again. Um, I want to get off Mr. Toad's wild ride. So it did a bunch of things like it uh, the, the end one is look at the top 10 cards of your library a creature into play it gets three one one counters and has hexproof until your next turn stuff like sounds that. pretty good stuff like that was happening but the whole time i was like getting my board he played a brutal fiery confluence that like destroyed a grindstone and then two damaged everything else which killed like three goblins and two construct tokens and it was all pretty brutal but we got there eventually like just grinding 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 as goblin engineer and goblin welder do but um i've never had someone go through the whole uh Undercity and then start again. <laughs> and uh, he he was so happy just to be doing it that he was like, I don't care yeah. if I lose, I went through it all. Yet the season ticket to the Undercity. It's like yeah, we're gonna yeah. go right back in again. <laughs> and I awfully I kept taking it for like a turn or two, so I was in the lost well and I had to keep confirming which where where I am in the Undercity as well. <laughs> I never thought I'd have to do this in a legacy event. I was this like is so flavorful. I can imagine like if, if this was like a TV show, we would see Callum like trying to find his way out of the Undercity and he yeah. runs into yeah. rooms. It's like, oh you gain five life. Oh no. Oh well, actually you'll lose five life, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, like it one felt of those like, like escape rooms yeah it's yeah cool. yeah it felt like kind of dungeons and dragons i was like i'm in the the lost well you're in tomb of the skeleton lord or something i don't know so yeah do people actually call it that i would just like call it the the lose five life room I, i'm very unfamiliar <laughs> no no he that. was very very actively calling them all by the right name and I, I he was writing down where on his notepad in which room we both are and stuff isn't there like an actual card that's the undercity that you can use to keep track of that yeah yeah he had that and he had dice on it but then he didn't have two because I needed one as well. <laughs> so anyway, but, oh, that's um, so yeah, cool. like, I mean that that card that, that that's not a card that's like a lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, almost, yeah, right. Like, yeah. I was sitting yeah. next to Sahar who was playing it as well, so I had she was like venturing in and he was doing it as well, and we were all laughing about how ridiculous the whole thing was. But it was it was really fun, <laughs> really funny, honestly. Um, 
I forgot to add about Axion events is they uh, have this like trademark thing where obviously top eight always plays and has good prizes and stuff, but they do top eights down to the 44th place. So they all have hilarious names like uh, Blueberry Muffin top eight, Pinch of Salt top eight. And um, they did a thing called the Close But Yet So Far top four. So ninth to 12th place are often like missing top eight on breakers. So they had a playoff where like whoever wins this top four playoff gets a scrub land, then a plateau, and then the other two get two force wills. So like really good prizes for not making top I was going to say, like that, that sounds yeah. really good. Yeah, it's insane. And then the other top eights, like, so then the uh, 13th down, to down, they're playing for a duel as well, not a blue. And then, oh, they're playing for a whole box of Modern Horizons, actually. And oh. then the top eights below that are also playing for similar things. So after the seven rounds, you still have like 50 people playing for good prizes. It's really cool. So day one, I, like that. I came in the top 16 and got like dispatched by Blue Red Delver really fast. You know, one of those games where deck just doesn't cooperate. It was tired. It was hungover. It was it was not doing as well. <laughs> but then the second day, I actually came 11th overall. So I got to play in that top four and I got to win it. I got my, nice. uh, so I won a scrub land on Sunday, which is really nice. Um, oh, is, is, is it is it a black bar scrap land? Oh, no, it's probably not. <laughs> no. <laughs> God, no. I was going to say, you know, Kai wants one of those, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I do. For your well, triumph for St. Catharines. It's got to try them out. But yeah. um, congratulations. Now you can uh, build you. Esper Doomsday, I suppose, right? Yes, exactly. That's what I wanted it for. <laughs> but um, I got my revenge against uh, Ant and then Reanimator in those two oh, matches. Sweet. So it was good. So it worked. Sweet. I One of the games against Reanimator, game two, he made a Grizzlebrand turn one, and I multi five, and still won. That's the power. Whoa! Of How did that go? What? Yeah. The hell? Yeah. He drew twenty one cards. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's a it's a really weird play pattern where you just you cannot concede against the reanimator because you play to the board. So I just like had a I had turn one uh, like saga turn two painter, and then you got the archon to like kill the painter as well, and he had a wear tear as well. But like. I drew pretty well. I drew another painter and then like blasted Grizzlebrand and then like drew another welder or something. And after f five turns of like good top decks, but I actually just like found the grindstone with the saga and had a uh, goblin welded in. He, he, was, he, was, he was completely <laughs> dismayed. He was like, after he realized what was going on, because I'd like played it, whatever I played before, he was there like discarding 20 cards to hand size going like, am I actually going to lose this game? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, so. that's one of the differences between like the old blue-black reanimator and the current iterations of reanimator, yeah. right? The old ones, they had like Force of Wills. They would like draw 14 cards and they would sit behind like two or three Force of Wills yeah, and nothing's exactly. going to happen to them. But these ones, here, they he, can he, lose. He just had Unmasks and Griefs and that's because, as I said before, like as Painter just plays to the board, you, you just play everything out against reanimator and you mm -hmm. can you always you almost always have a shot of like top deck in the right thing and just just comboing out of nowhere so that was cool awesome but, um, yeah so massive massive success for the weekend i think um especially for legacy uh, again like the organizers spoke to them afterwards and they said they've been really blown away by the response from legacy and they just they're just going to put those more legacy events on because there was <laughs> that's cool yeah, yeah there was a, a middle ground where like just before the um the pandemic and stuff they were not sure because they used to do like about 50 person 60 person legacy events always with like nice jewels as prizes and stuff and they were kind of starting to zone them out because the numbers were dwindling a little bit but they've there's just been a big resurgence in like love of legacy here i think uh, among uk people and stuff like pioneer and modern because there's no gp circuit in europe they're just disenfranchised and don't really care so yeah i think that's where we're going that's amazing. Dude, actually, while we're at it, why, why don't we go into the uh, the deck lists right away? Because we also have some legacy news and we are going to talk a little bit about listener questions. But I think while we're at it, yeah. why don't we just like go straight into the deck lists? That's a good idea. Cool. Okay. Uh, I'll, um, so the first question you've written is, did Callum repel the Viking invaders? I did not. <laughs> so I want to give a special... shame to your family, <laughs> to your <laughs> ancestors. Give a special shout out to Anders Teason, who um, in... To, on top of all those down to 44th place top eights, they also had a a prize worth like £2,000 to uh, whoever did the best in the Swiss of both events over. So, where, where, where's all this money coming from? This is insane. Yeah, they just pour a lot of money. Or is it just events. like because the, the, the nobody wants the pound anymore? <laughs> that as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Thanks they, to Liz Truss, I guess. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Liz, for getting this. Um, Anderson, for sponsoring Anderson. this event. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Do you know the name of it? Ampersand or something? It's uh, a, ampersand? Like, ampersand. I, I learned about this word like half a year ago. To yeah, me, it's yeah. just like the and sign. Okay. Ampersand. Yeah, yeah. So, and is one that he went like 6 1 both days or 5 1 1 the first day or 6 1. He did really well. So, yeah, Anders won that. And he, so he top eighted both events as well on uh, Blue Zenith. So, well done, Anders. That was great. So, yeah, Saturday's top eight. We've got the two top eights here and a few interesting deck lists to go through. And then we won't cover like from ninth down, even though we could get them. I think it's a bit much. But um, in in first place on Saturday, we had Jasper on Painter. As I said earlier, this is the same 75 that I played as well. Jasper is like a long time Painter expert and he's just been crushing with this. He, I think he came, he won or came second at an LLM recently as well. And he's doing really well online with it. So that's great. Oh, well, the second place, this is a blast from the past. Yes, so... <laughs> Second place, we have Alex Delis with Ad Nauseam Tendrils, but this is like old school Ant. So Alex has been around for a long time, um, really like kind of a cool customer. He plays very like deliberately and he's terrifying to play against with Ant because he just doesn't make mistakes. He, he's, or well, generally. Um, I mean, he plays a one-off peak. That's why he doesn't make mistakes, right? <laughs> yeah, he played oh this against Oh my me. goodness. <laughs> so yeah. he was my loss in day one, one of them. And um, yeah, he. This list is basically Wilson Hunter's list from the Brainstorm Show. I'm sure many listeners will remember that. So this is two two Passing Flames main deck, two Grim Tutor main deck, and uh, no Ad Nauseam main deck. So this is a Passing Flames deck. So it's um, otherwise you've got the usual suspects as Brainstorm, Dot Ritual, three Duress, one Peak, four Ponder, two Preordain, one Rain of Filth, four Thought Seize, four Cabal Ritual, four Infernal Tutor, two Grim Tutor, one Empty, two Passing Flames, one Tendrils, and then. LEDs and Lotus Petals, 15 lands as usual. And then the sideboard, he has two Chrome Mox and Ad Nauseam um, among <laughs> just wow. like speed up. Among some other things, he has like three Chain of Vapor, one in Inquisition, three Hercules Recall, four Leyland in the Void, and a Massacre. But yeah, like a lot of Antlisters have even like gone to Burning Wish, like two Burning Wishes in the deck as well. But he is just old schooling it. Like Grim Tutor, I haven't seen in forever. Yeah. How do I mean, you feel about this guy? That, that, that's a crazy deck list. Like, like uh, when you mentioned Min Vincent uh, mm -hmm. Hunter, like that is like this deck list is just crazy old. Yeah, Holy I, th I think this is like basically like, his, his 75. Like, I, I'm just like going through the deck list. Like, I don't even know. Like, what's the newest card that got printed for this uh... deck? Like, is it Chromox? No, I have no idea. This no, no, Chromox is 2005. <laughs> Oops, okay. <laughs> or four. Well, like, this deck is You're right. It's wow, all, it's this really is old. old. Yeah. I think the newest card might like be Ad Nauseam. Or Inquisition Puzzle <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. It might actually be Inquisition. I, I gotta yeah. say, like, I, I gotta say, like, I, I love how clean this deck list is mm -hmm. in terms of like you know, it does it doesn't fuck around with any like crazy one-offs, even though there are two Grim Tutors, and Grim mm -hmm. Tutor generally pretty good at grabbing those like the, those crazy one-offs um as like um you know specific answers for I don't know, for permanence in game one, for example, or like for specific hate in post board games, but this Decklist doesn't really have a lot of like, except the the one of massacre maybe in the sideboard. There's really mm -hmm. not a lot of like crazy one offs going on. Um, I like how streamlined this deck the deck is. Um, I can't really comment on peak because I think this is like the the like the biggest meme card of. <laughs> literally, like, I think there's a reason there's one. Uh, yeah, like 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 imagine like drawing mul multiple peaks and it's like yeah, it's gonna do it again, you know. <laughs> I mean, so in our match, I think he he thought sees me like saw no my break trap, then I top deck one, and then the turn after he peaked, and I was like fucking hell. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so then he he cast a cantrip and found more discard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Because like you know, the, you see peak, but then there's no cabal therapy, which I thought could you know you know be, yeah. maybe be paired with peak, but that's some combo. I, there's like a couple of quite questions in my, in my head. I was also like I, I see like three duress, but instead of the fourth one, there's an inquisition to cause it like which doesn't hit force of will and yada yada yada. There's like mm -hmm. a, a couple of small things going on, but generally I am dude, I'm I'm stoked to see like actual ad nauseum tendrils. Yeah. Uh, in top eight, like no offense, the epic storm, but uh, you know. I don't know. Like I, I grew up with Cabal Ritual, dude. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a Cabal Ritual. Yeah, you can, you can see it's where yeah. your heart is. Yeah. So, so but... what is the idea behind running something like Grim Tutor over uh, Wishclaw Talisman? Is, is it to do so, something like Collector Oof, or what, what's the point? Well, I like. I mean, Grim Tutor um, can be used off Past and Flames, right? It's, it's a sorcery. And like oh. Wishclaw Talisman is linked artifact. You got to give it to your opponent, which is pretty terrible with Empty the Warrens because they're gonna find their one off engine explosives, for example, or like some other sweeper effect for your goblins. Um, mm -hmm. And also, uh, Visual Talisman can easily like be prismatic ending, for example, if you play and pass, and just like a, there's like a bunch of things I think. Um, but Grim Tutor is also 
it's, it's a cool car, dude. You know, just yeah. It's just he, he, he had, he had the, o, the OG portal ones as well. So bonus points there. Uh, yeah, he, I think I, he didn't do it against me, but like I know a play pattern with this is sometimes you just have to go and find a, a duress as well. Like it, you can just cast it like against control. You just make your land drops and cast it and get like a discard spell or whatever. Just you just go like for four mana duress yeah. be, because you really want to and you can. <laughs> yeah, I think by the way, I think the reason for four thoughts these three duress is. I don't know if it was in the original list. Maybe it was, but like Endurance, because this is a Past and Flames deck, right? So it is a big bit weak to Endurance. Oh, yeah, that, oh, yeah. that's a good oh, point. Yeah. 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 You're heavily reliant on the Graveyard there. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I, like, but the more I think about it, maybe, you know, maybe in current Legacy, there's not a lot of board sweepers. I, I don't know if, if that's like entirely true, but like if I look at Empty the Warrens, I don't know if there are like many decks who can like no, there's not just 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 beat I don't know fourteen, sixteen goblins or something like that because like Terminus like is just not very popular these days, and like the the individual creatures are so powerful in Legacy right now that um you would you would want a Terminus even if there's like one creature on the field, right? But um like the yeah. sweepers like like, the, like there are there are rarely games where there are like a couple of creatures in play and you're like yeah i guess i can you know i can just let them be there for like two three turns and eventually i'm gonna like supreme verdict them yeah i um, guess nobody plays battle anymore either right True. so uh yeah maybe I, I i'm just really curious about empty the warrants um it kind of kind of rings a bell again. yeah i guess you're, you're right probably like i think i have a feeling that this list like i did talk to him a little bit about it at the event and he just said it's it's Wilson Hunters from like five years ago, and I love it, and that's why I play. <laughs> okay. So that, back when the deck was still at hair? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not even sure if that's true. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's what you like. So yeah, as I said, Alex, he's, he's um, been playing this forever. And yeah, he... congratulations. Pretty cool deck, yeah. Alex. And what a cool final, Painter versus Ant. Like, yeah. Cla dude, classy. I, I, w it. I wish we could have gotten that on stream. Yeah, it was a really cool match. So... Um, Painter won game one. Alex like went for a, he, what happened? He went for an ad nauseum and didn't like it. Didn't go very well. And they went for a pass in flames with an LED like making three blue to like cantrip into more action. He had a bunch of black matter floating, and Jasper had a blast for the first ponder, and the next two didn't find anything. And then on the last cantrip he cast there, he um, drew an ad nauseum, which is in a sideboard. So there was a big judge call. And oh no it was resolved really well i thought so um they took his deck list and they checked his sideboard there's just 14 cards sideboard are there so it was clear that he's just forgotten to sideboard out there wasn't a card uh, extra in the sideboard or whatever so they basically took the ad nauseum from his hand it didn't get replaced with any other card but at least it wasn't a game loss and they carried on playing and uh it was funny so that happened and jasper like kind of messed up a little bit of the turn prior as well so they're both there keeping themselves and um and kind of whiffed on finding finding action so jasper got game one yeah then alex won game two so it came into a decider game three and then they start playing and jasper's about to play his mountain for turn one he's like wait wait, wait shit i forgot to put in a ley line <laughs> so, <laughs> what yeah <laughs> so he like alex just said you haven't done anything there's no information gone please put it in the judge was next to them and the judge said if you're happy with that go for it and so alex let him have it and it was the deciding factor um, oh wow it actually made a difference yeah leyline absolutely wow. won the game in the end like jasper got the combo down and um yeah alex was like he showed his hand after a brainstorm he was one mana off the kill basically because of the ley wow. line. Uh -huh. so yeah really cool final really cool cool it was a lot of back and forth it was very interactive like they uh, Alex had like chain of vapors and stuff, and those blasts and all this stuff. So yeah, that's just like yeah. good, good. Like not necessarily creature mag magic, but I think this is what most people understand as it's like good magic, even if it's not like yeah, untap block whatever. It's just like really yeah. tiny little interactions on the stack, off the stack, and yeah. All three, I all three games were great. Like there was no mana screw, whatever. It was just cards doing cool. their thing. Yeah. So yeah, and speaking of great games, um, there's there's more interesting decks in the top eight, right? Yep. So. <laughs> Uh, in third, uh, I didn't get the actual Swiss standings, so third slash fourth. Um, Stephen Walsh on 8-cast. It's a pretty stock 8-cast list. Stephen, he's done really well at LMs as well with 8-cast. He's an incredible player, so well done to him. And then the other third and fourth is Andy Fernandez. Remember this name, because first of all, just he's the guy that designed the Applejacks list that um, kind of made a bit of a breakout recently with the Minsk and Booze and stuff. And mm -hmm. so he made top four with, he calls it Green Red Valakut. 
I'll, ru I'll run through the list and then you guys get, give me your impression. So he has two Dryad Arbor, four Corsair of Crufix, four Dryad of the Elysian Grove, three Ramanup Excavator, one Tireless Tracker, four Commune with Spirits, which is a one green sorcery. Look at top four cards of your library. You can reveal an enchantment or land and put it into your hand and the rest on the bottom of the library. Four Greens and Zenith, three Twinosphere, four Exploration, four Valakut Exploration, <laughs> and then 27 lands that includes four Valakut the Molten Pinnacle, uh, four Wastelands, and four Ancient Tombs. And in the sideboard, he has like usual red green stuff two Pyroblast, two Run Afoul, a Collector Roof, four Endurance, three Cossacks Return, and three Force of Vigor. Guys, if you saw this, would Good. you think it's going to top four a big legacy event? Good. I love it so much. It's I think so it, it would maybe beat some control decks, but other than that, I, I, I would think like this gets just like rolled over by combo decks. Yeah. Like literally e every single deck now. Like I, I mean, like <laughs> I, I, I look at this pile and it's like, like what is this good against? Apparently, so, a lot. <laughs> uh, apparently, he was just killing people like turn three and four sometimes. With what? Oh, because because you have the. Uh, Val Curse Valakut of Crufix and, and Exploration. Uh, yeah, so you get to put so many lands into play. Yeah, and with four Valakuts and Dryads, like, making your sixth land, always, it always hits it. And, like, yeah, Corsair and um, Explorations and then things. Yeah, the deck goes off, basically. It's pretty right. cool. Oh, and Commune with Spurs just, like, one mana? That's filthy. Okay, yeah, so, so, yeah, it's literally yeah, better than Ponder. It finds uh, Corsair and Dryad or your lands. Um, he was also waste locking people a lot, so you have like all these exploration effects, and then four wastelands and ramming up excavator, and then you obviously have the four green suns and the communal spirits to find all these good three drop creatures. It's yeah, it's it's yeah, it's kind of like a kind of like a like a red, like gruel land destruction aggro kind of kind of <laughs> even like just even like like prison Ponsa. elemental like 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 yeah Ponza deck like Trinisphere to completely lock them out of the Three game Trinispheres and then like four wastelands with excavation yeah that's and stuff. like that's I guess that's not a joke like yeah. I I I I guess the the common play pattern here is like uh, turn one I like you either have the the two mana a soul land such as ancient tomb or mm -hmm. or like a turn one dried arbor of green sun zenith so like you, you kind of try to get to three mana asap because this mana curve is crazy it, it's mm -hmm. like almost mono three drop this whole yeah. this whole list yeah and you really you really want the green sun or the exploration turn one i think oh yeah exploration can also like you know get you to three yeah. mana i guess like to four even four mana but yeah so <laughs> it's it's quite similar to the there was like dryad stompy uh, a few couple of years ago i guess and it's similar to that, but that one played Chalices and a couple of Mox Diamonds. And it had, like, uh, Field of the Dead and Primeval Titan as a top end. Yeah. It played two Valakuts, but it was, like, it was a secondary game plan. Whereas this is foregoing the Chalices um, for <laughs> Communion with Spirits and Exploration. And I do know that I've talked to Andy today and on the weekend, and he thinks Chalice is not in a very good spot. Yeah, that's what I was wondering about, right? Because as we later on get to his other deck list, that's also mm -hmm. a Stompy list that also doesn't play Chalice. So w w when I saw the Naya Stompy list that we're going to talk about in a moment, I also felt like maybe this guy just doesn't like Chalice in the metagame right now. Yep, maybe he doesn't have him. I've actually, no, no, he does. I've actually got quotes from him, which I'll get to, uh, on why no Chalice. Cool. So uh, yeah, I just, I've just pulled it up. So yeah, uh, we'll post, we'll put, I've, I've uh, tweeted this on Twitter on twitter oh, you tweet it on I twitter know, I know. <laughs> the technology man it's, it's finally here <laughs> I, I used to tweet on facebook but now we can do it on twitter that's what i was trying to do but then it said you're old you don't know what's going on and uh yeah we'll post the deck list in the description as well uh, the ones that we're talking about going into in depth and then the quarter finalists i went through the deck list and they're all fairly stock what you expect so i'll just say there was two blue zeniths one was anders and theo and dries on blue zenith as well they had tox screen in or theo's did as well it's kind of cool Oh, what? Tox Screen is another Warhammer 40,000 card. Oh, what does it do? It's uh, three and a green for a two, four with reach and death touch, and all lands lose all abilities and can tap for any color of mana. Ooh, I like that. That's a that's a so spicy. That's a spicy. Uh, Kill tech. Saga like would stop the top Valakut against Andy's deck, for example. Um, mm -hmm. It's a bit dicey against Depths because if if they play the Depths, it has no counters, and they kill the Tox Screen. It, it, Goes like that. But it's the, the Black Moon problem, right? Yeah. yeah. But it's also like, he's playing it in like a five color deck. It fixes your mana. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, like, it's like they had designed the entire card to just like have out of yeah. these filthy five color decks. It's green, so you can you can Zenith for it, of course. And um, I don't know. Wait, 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 it's a creature? Yeah, it's a 2 4 reach death touch, which is a really good stat line. Oh, that's really good against Delver, too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's like Dig against it. the DRCs and the Delvers, it's phenomenal. So. Yeah, I, I'm into it. Anders, Anders was off it. He 
sprang one with him, but was off it. But yeah, Theo played one, and it's cool. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. as a, as a target, it's cool. Um, we have Sam Pontius, sorry, if, I think that's his surname, on Blue Red Delver, and then last one, Lewin Keller on Reanimator. He's he's also my other loss on day one. So my losses were to second place and uh, eighth. Yeah, well. you lost to a lot of people who made top eight over the weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So You're it good goes. At that. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me, it makes me feel better, you know. <laughs> it's okay. Um, cool. Yeah, I I just especially loved the the, the finals there. And then awesome. on Sunday, and then we have the second day, right? Yeah. Second day is where where even more spice came into the this, finals. This is even more spicy. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to yeah. start. Like, I literally I sent this deck list that we we're about to talk about to a friend of mine uh, this afternoon, and I, like sometimes you can literally tell when somebody they type on Facebook, then they stop. No, they look at the list. <laughs> yeah. They come back. They type, 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 and it's just like like jaw drop to the floor. It's like, what is this? Yeah. Like some of those, those cards I had never seen before. So the player is Andy Fernandez again. So he's the player who played Red Green Valkyrie yesterday, and he's also, again the Applejacks guy. So I'm going to read through the list and then let you guys talk about it. Oh, that's yeah. a compa- Dude, that's a companion. Holy shit, so, I just saw that. Like reading through the list doesn't even do it justice because I no. didn't even know half the cards we, when we started talking about I'll, this. I'll say what some of the cards do. So it's it's a Naya Stompy deck, basically, to give you an overview. Um, it has Gigantha the Wellspring as the companion. Though I will say now he said do not run this because he cast it once and it didn't matter. And it just tells your opponent that you don't have Chalice, Force of Will, Endurance, Force of Vigor. Good, lots of good cards uh, so yeah fury yeah fury as well so to kick things off he has four morlock you guys know what morlock does <laughs> definitely not <laughs> nope. so this is uh, another one of forty thousand card it's a uh, green red x and it's a two two the x is um it comes to play with x one one counters on it and when it enters the battlefield it fights up to one target creature an opponent controls if that creature would die it's turn xl instead so People have been like talking about this as a green sun target. I know you can't pay the X with green sun, but like at ETBs and just fights a DRC or a Delver or something. But here, he's just got like a ton of fast mana. So it's a removal spell. And he played it against me, like just XL the Goblin Engineer. And then it's a 5 5, just smashing your face in after that. So it's pretty good. He has four Archon of Ameria. Um, as a reminder, this is um, two and a white for a 2 3 flyer. Each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. And non basic lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. Then he has three white plume adventurer. This is like the... what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this, like half these cards are not even on Magic Online. No, so Morlock and White Plume Adventurer aren't on Magic Online. It's like a commander card, isn't it? This is yeah, Baldur's Gate commander. So this is uh, three mana, so two and a white for three three. When it ends the battlefield, you take up the initiative, and then at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, untap a creature you control. If you completed a dungeon, untap all creatures you control instead. That's pseudo vigilance, basically. But so three mana, three three, ETB take initiative. You think? Doesn't sound that that strong, but what yeah, the initiative I, will do? It felt like this this was one of the weakest creatures in the deck, but I immediately thought maybe we can replace this. I think it's actually the best. <laughs> wow! Really? Okay, Why? It, okay, enlighten it's, us. It's yeah. actually the best. I would say it's that and Fable are probably the best cards and threats in the deck. So what this does? Three mana, three three. Each, so the first part of the initiative is you go and search for a basic land. This is a three color stumpy deck. The mana is pretty shaky, so being able to search for a basic is massive, and then. So this deck is also, I should say, designed to cast three drops in turn one. This is what it does. Um, I'll get to it in a second, but it has four Lowe's Pedal, four Mox Diamond, and eight Soul Lands. It is playing three drops in turn one, otherwise you're probably mulliganing your hand. This one, turn one, goes and finds your basic to follow up and play another threat the next turn. He does play one of each color basic as well. Um, turn two, you, you're going to a dungeon that puts two 1-1 one, one counts on a creature. So turn two, you're attacking with a 5-5 five, five Pseudo Vigilance. And mm-hmm. then the next dungeon just drains your opponent. Well, they lose five life. And then you attack your 5-5 five, five again. That's 15 damage on turn 3. Okay, I, okay, okay. It's yeah. really fast. And you can go into other dungeons if they kill it as well. Um, this deck is so absolutely aggressive as well. Like It kills so quickly that your opponent can't really afford to attack you back and try and take the initiative. It's just... It's hard this, to... This card literally takes the initiative, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like This deck, it's hard to... You need to see it in action, but it's it's very fast and aggressive. So, you know what? We, we might actually see those cards in Magic Online. I think what, what was it XJ Cloud who actually tweeted that the yeah. uh, the new Lords Daybreak game, whatever they're called, of Magic Online. Yeah. And yeah. apparently they're like pretty quick to respond to stuff, and they, they told us they they are actually looking into adding more cards. Yeah, there's gonna be an announcement with the next update, so hopefully that they're coming and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a feeling that stickers will be implemented later and stuff. But if these cards can come on, like the 40k ones as well, that'd be cool. 
Oh yeah. Um, so we've done Morlock, Ark of Ameria, White Flame Adventurer, and then four Thought Not Seers. And then we have four Minsk and Boo Timeless Heroes. We all know what that does. Another insanely aggressive card. And then he has four Source to Plowshares. This is going under the same route as before. Like He's playing one drops over Chalice in what would be an otherwise obvious Chalice shell. But he said he just doesn't think Chalice is very good right now. And the one drops are just better. So he's like, mm -hmm. he's like against the decks where you'd want a Chalice, like Chalice is probably best against Delver, but they can still Merc Tide you. So he's like, I just want to have Source to Plowshares instead. Dude, I like this. Yeah, I like this. I, I, I'm just like happy to see Chalice go a little bit further back to being a meme yeah. card again. I mean, it's never going to be a full meme card ever again, but mm -hmm. it's it's certainly not its best right now. And I think we even talked about this a couple of episodes ago, um, or even when something like Prismatic Ending was, was spoilered. But Andy's really putting this into action. Yeah, he's. I'll finish off the deck list and then I'll go through some of his reasoning as well. So other threats, he has full Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So he pretty much said that, yeah, White Flame Adventurer and Fables are mostly the best card in the deck. Archon is like the only anti combo card in the, in the main deck, but it's a big nod to anti combo. So it's pretty good. But I, I call dealing yeah. 15 damage on the third turn an anti combo card as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's that's from one card. You can then spend your second and third turns playing playing other spells, which like is, is killing them on turn three. So yeah. I, I guess but when you put it like that, it's, it's almost like a three mana, five, five paste. Yeah. Yeah, you can think of that. Well, it's and it drains you. Yeah, which also fixes your mana. Yeah, it finds a basic as well. Um, and then it does more stuff if they're not dead by then. <laughs> like, okay, yeah. okay. You you completely turned me around. I, I yeah. love this card. I need yeah. to buy a place out. Yep. And then, as I said, it's full Lotus Pedal, full Mox Diamond. Again, the deck is just like... Some Stumpy decks, when they have like Lotus Pedal and City of Traders as like their first plays and stuff, you're like, oh, that's going to be painful if like, it doesn't work out. But Fable and um, White Food Adventure fix your mana. Go and find more things and just help you there. And then we have one Relic of Genesis and one Shadow Spear. That's because he also plays Urza Saga here. Mm -hmm. So into the mana base, he has four Sagas, as I said. There's a Savannah, a Plateau, and then a Plains, a Mountain, and a Forest, which are his um, basics to find with the White Flame Adventurer. Dude, look at these other lands. Then, oh, sorry. my goodness. I'm getting to the fun, fun at the end. Oh, my goodness. Four H2 and four City of Traders. And then we have two Battlefield Forge and two Brushland. Those are the pain lands. I mean, so, those, are, those are normal. <laughs> so because he has um, Thornos here, these are like tri lands. And then he has one Moss Fire Valley as well, oh which, my goodness. <laughs> which oh did my God. so much work against me. He cast oh Minsk and Boo God. off uh, Ancient Tomb with it against me. Oh, that's oh filthy. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my shit. And, oh my, it blew it cost, my mind right now. It cast Minsk and Boo and Morlock. So anyone doesn't know, Moss Fire Valley is a land from Odyssey. It doesn't tap for any mana itself, but you can pay one and tap it to add a red and a green. So it helps um, cast it's Minsk and Boo and basically a filter land, right? Yeah, filter land, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, then the sideboard is two by force, um, two path to XL, two pyroblast, two unlicensed hearse, two choke, two to uh, Kozak's return, and two trinosphere. He likes two of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. oh, yeah, I want I want to play this deck so yeah. fucking badly, and too, I literally man. can't. You can't. I think I think Andy's just a really good deck builder. He Holy is. I guess I could play like, this like, like in a he, local. Yeah, he's like really went. like thinking outside the box. I think because like a mm. card like Moss Fire Valley, like this card would not have crossed my mind for any potential like yeah i remember when, when Callum, um, really. told us about naya stompy i think my my literal reaction to that was like <laughs> posting like a weird m emoji on, on twitter or something yeah. because yeah. i couldn't imagine like what a naya stompy would no. look like because the mana would be so horrible but yeah i guess our, our mono white one drop uh yeah right <laughs> one drop three drop and the most ready and stuff they they really make it work. This is this is crazy. Yeah. This, yeah like, honestly, like when you think about it, this is like actually a four color deck. This is a four color deck. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is <laughs> four I mean, color and, and stumpy, I, sure. again, like, and I told you guys even before we recorded, but like, um, you guys post like TKS, and like, I had to really think for a whole <laughs> minute what yeah. that even means. Like TKS, like it kind of rings a bell, but really, like, does it? And it's like Timur, oh my goodness, servant or something. Right. <laughs> like it's been almost like six years ago, like since the last time I heard someone say like TKS. And yeah, like, okay. Back. Of course, of course, that's thought not see. Yeah. yeah, he is also. Um, it helps when you're playing these kind of stompy decks. He's like incredibly technical and a good player with that. Like he, he does. He takes his time to think about sequencing, like two turns ahead. And this is what's so scary about someone with these kind yeah. of decks. Like some some people would just jam whatever and be like, oh, this seems like the best here. Yeah, but he really <laughs> thinks everything through and. Yeah. So again, I played him in the Swiss this day, yeah. and he just destroyed me. <laughs> Yeah, turn one Archon on the play is a hell of a thing. 
Yeah, also like those two deck lists that they have, they have like, they, they look like kind of similar, you know, just like of, uh, just being a, a three drop um, centric deck. deck, you know, yeah. with like a lot of fast mana. But what they do is just com something completely different because like the, the first green red Valakut deck, that's like a, a heavy land destruction deck, right? Mm -hmm. Like like three ram and apps, like really attacking the mana, being like a Trinisphere taxing, yeah. kind of like prison type of deck. Mm -hmm. And the Naya Stompy deck is just like a dude in your, in your face, dude, like ASAP. <laughs> and like, like, like punch as much as you can and yeah oh again I, you have Love to it. see it to believe it how fast and aggressive this deck is like it's and like and like you gotta like you gotta imagine being like andy like like after saturday it's like yeah i mean i i <laughs> like i i i uh, i made it to the semi-finals but i lost so i guess i'm gonna build something completely different <laughs> yeah. you know like i'm not satisfied enough for sunday so i gotta build like something completely different that's, and, like, that also speaks to his mindset right this is just like you know i have so many awesome decks like uh, who knows he would, <laughs> what, what he would have played if there was like a third day to a tournament yeah <laughs> I, I bet he has more ideas as well. yeah it could have been like a golgari stompy deck who knows <laughs> i'm sure he has that i'm sure he does <laughs> but um yeah his records in the swiss he 5-0'd to double id on the saturday and he went 6-1 on the sunday and then it, wait and he didn't have the the, the overall best score that no. was actually still and, anders and is still won by i think two points yeah. Oh, yeah, oh. That, that was the thing, right? Well, I think Anders so, talked about that, where yes. he could have drawn into the top eight on the last day, but he had to play because he was playing for that, that ampersand exactly. foil so set. They, so they both could have drawn on the Sunday, but then Andy played, and so Anders had to play as well. Oh, dude, that's amazing. I, I, it's yeah. just like the incent incentive structure there. Yeah. It's just like, hey, we, we're still going to play. And I mean, that also means somebody else made it into the top eight who would have otherwise not made it yeah. in. Yeah, totally. Um, by the way, both days fully played out every top eight we don't do. Splitting is not a thing in the UK, basically. Love it, love it. Yeah, totally. Keep going. <laughs> so then, yeah, the finals was against um, Andreas Hoverberg, who is better known as Delphar on Magic Online. Um, as I mentioned earlier, he's like, you know, complete crusher. So he, again, the finals was Painter. I was hoping for the back, back, back to back in my heart, but um, Naya Stumpy winning, I, I, I can't be angry at that as well. <laughs> yeah, too, str too, yeah. too strong. <laughs> yeah. Love uh, it. Andreas said in game three, he just killed him on turn three. This, this yeah, yeah. I, 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 now that you mention it, like that yeah. probably came off the back of, of like White Bloom Adventure or something. Yeah, I believe it was. Yeah, yeah it's probably that Mossfire Valley. Or I, maybe a Charm on Minskin Poo. <laughs> you know, it, the deck can do it. Like the deck is, yeah, it's it's scary, very scary. So uh, Andreas's painted deck is quite different to mine, Jasper's. So he plays four Khans, which like I'm off and stuff, and he plays Incinerium Bridge and stuff. It's um. It's not so different, really, but like basically, Khan makes you weaker against Delva, um, but just better against random stuff. And so there wasn't a ton of Delva here. Um, he's also just a master with the deck, so yeah, he he um, yeah, he just kind of cruised five O double ID to make top eight, and then just got, got to the final. So really, really strong showing from him. He played lands on the Saturday, and there was a ton of lands. So he played a bunch of mirrors. There was so much lands at both these events. It was weird to see. Dude, but... there's so much lands at almost all European events I go to. I remember yeah. when I went to Rome to an MKM a couple of years ago, lands was literally the most played deck. Crazy. Wait, what? <laughs> I, th I think there was legitimately as much lands as Delver at these events. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, I think lands is one of those decks that really grabs you and, and reels you yeah. in and, and you, you become the lands player. It's yeah. just like... Totally. That's how it works. No, yeah, I think no one like wants people, to be the Delver yeah. guy. But I think like people just want to like show off their uh, tabernacles. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's a cool deck to pimp. I, I used to own lands like literally eleven years ago, and I was so into pimping it and I loved playing it. But eventually, I somehow found a way out, and I think I started playing Sneak Show afterwards <laughs> for, <laughs> for like a year. Lands. Yeah, what a terrible change. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, but then I found elves. Anyway. <laughs> Fourth place, we have goblins, but not normal goblins. Sticky. <laughs> Sticky. Sticky goblins. So we have, I think it's universally accepted that it's been called Mind Goblin. Yeah, people ever, like, to, to, the, to this point, I, I even thought it was called Mind Goblin, but then you go back and you're like, oh, no, <laughs> yeah. wait, it's it's like quadruple underscore goblin or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. It took me a while to work out what to put into it when writing up the list on goldfish. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> um so this is uh, James Mills. He's an awesome friend of mine. I've known him for like since I was playing pre-releases when I was like 15. So really cool. He doesn't play a ton of Legacy these days, but he always always been playing like goblins and stuff. And uh, I lent him some cards to this, and his deck building was so good. He was like, "Callum, just lend me some Legacy cyborg cards. Just give me some like Leylands and shit. I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, oh, yeah. are those the Leylands that you played on the on Saturday? No. Did I see in the sideboard right now? I've got nine Leylands for some reason. 
<laughs> of course just, you do. Of just course, yeah. Gotta lay down some fools. So I'll read through his deck list. Um, because there's been like there's no solidified um mind goblin deck list yet. So this is four goblin lackey, four skirt prospector, three mog war marshal, three run velt horde master, one gem palm incinerator, four goblin matron, one goblin sharpshooter, four goblin war tree, four mind goblin, three goblin ringleader, and four moxus, and then four shadow scar smashing. Three Chrome Mocks, four Ancient Tomb, four Cavern of Souls, ten Mountains. Really simple, actually. And then Cyborg, two Chalice, two Pyroblast, one Reb, two Blood Moon, one Goblin Trash Master, four Le- uh, Leyline of the Void, and three Mind Rate Trap. So how do you guys feel about this deck? Well, I see another deck that could uh, pull off the Chalice of the Void, but doesn't. Oh, wait, hold on. This this deck list doesn't have any Aether Vials. Nope. Ah. It's just, just Mono Red, ten Mountains. This is just like Turbo Muxes, basically. The, okay. game, the game plan yeah. is resolve a uh, mind goblin and then into Muxus and stuff. He said he resolved many, many guacamole goblins, <laughs> which is, <laughs> is so funny to me. I don't know. Oh, okay. so, yeah, can, can, should, should we like very quickly mention well, what's the deal about mind goblin, yes, uh, about yeah. guacamole goblins and, and what have you? Yeah, good point. <laughs> good yeah. point. So the, the, the way the goblin works is, um, now that it's out, when you bring 10 sticker sheets, one of those new sticker sheets, to the tournament and before each game you randomize them and then you select three of them face down basically right and each one of them has like three different words on them and as the goblin the where we call it mind goblin comes into play you can then put a sticker on it to add something to its name like guacamole goblin and i don't know what the other words are and the goblin cares about the number of individual vowels that are in that word and yeah, it's. It, it, I, I still can't believe that we're actually talking about this, but this is how it works. And ideally, you'd get to something like five or six walls because there are some sticker sheets and because there's some randomization involved, you don't always get that. But even if you only get like, let's say four or five mana, that might still be good enough to cast your maxes on something like turn two even, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he said like once or twice against Delver, he just kind of played some land drops until he had two caverns and then went mind goblin, make five mana, maxes with the cavern. And then that's just like, like sit behind 17 force of worlds, doesn't matter. Yeah. Thank you yeah, for the yeah. game. The, like, have all the forces you want, I don't care. The devil player here, I know him as well. He said, yeah, he had two force of wills in hand, but just nothing you can do. Damn. So this <laughs> deck is funny as well, because Goblin Lackey with four Muxes in the deck can be great and stuff. But actually, Goblins has gone through a weird transformation where with the printing of Muxus and... Well, actually, sorry, with the printing of Runvelt Hallmaster, Scott Prospector is actually the better one drop in the deck now. And I'm just way more scared of Prospector. It's just like a lot of bodies in the format at the moment as well that block Lackey and stuff. Just tons of removal for it. But Scott Prospect, what it can do with Runvelt Holdmaster and Mog War Marshals, you can just like cycle through your whole deck and make tons of mana and basically chain muxes into each other as well with thanks to ringleaders and matrons and stuff. Oh, so that's this, nice, this yeah. should actually be able to p- kill pretty quickly, right? Yeah. So this is like... It, play, it, it plays creatures and attacks, fine, but it's it's got a lot of combo elements to it as well. Um, it really goes off. He said Sharpshooter was insane for him as well. Like, it just just killed people out of nowhere because with the Skirt Prospectors and then Runville <laughs> Hordemaster cycling through the deck, it just killed people from, like, 20 life or whatever. Yeah, I dig it. Like, it looks like the Hordemaster, like, made, made this deck, like, an engine deck of some yeah. sort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's great. Really common people out. Cool. Rest of the top eight, we have Alex Ebbinger on Steak and Show. I looked at that. He had a couple of omnisciences, otherwise pretty standard. Then we have in the, the fifth I like game. how you try to say something nice about the deck list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be nice to everyone. Uh, apart from Anders Thiessen, who is in fifth to eighth again with Blue Zenith. <laughs> we have James Calver on eight mulch. We have Enrico Genisi on four color control. And then uh, this is another really interesting one. Uh, Francis Jean Rowe, another really good, uh, very strong local London player. So this is like the Fiend Arts and not Elves deck, but it's actually just Guy's Cradle Midrange is what I want to call it. I guess that's a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's almost like the rock. Like at, at yeah. this point, we even have like Marine of Clan Nail Tooth, which is yeah. like a Nickfit staple. So I was waiting for you to say, do you, do you know what that does, Callum? And I was like, I played it tons in Nickfit. Yeah. But a, a friend of mine played it in Commander and we, in dual, in French Dual uh, Commander. Okay. And so I played a lot against it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this is this is very much not even close to an elf deck anymore, but it's got the same deck building philosophies to its extent. So it's, um, I do a quick rundown two Dried Arbor, two Allosaurus Shepherd, four Birds of Paradise. Four Elvish Reclaimer, one Sylvan Safekeeper, one Collect Roof, four Fiend Artisan, one Scavenger News, two Elvish Spirit Guide, three Endurance, one Opposition Agent, one Plague Engineer, one Merin of Clan Neltoth, one Crater Who Beam Off, then one Grist to the Hunger Tide, one Crop Rotation, 
four green sun zenith, three once upon a time, three natural order, and then the mana base is a Bayou, a Bajuka Bog, Pseiji who endures, four cradles, obviously, one Caracas, two Misty Rainforest, one Savannah, two Snow Covered Forest, Tropical Island, and then six green fetches. This literally looks like somebody spilled over the deck list and they were like, oh damn, I, I need to like get the deck back together. I don't know, like maybe this and oh, there's like four more cards missing or just like give me the Marin of Clan Nail Tooth. And, oh yeah, two, two have a spirit guides. Damn, we couldn't find the fourth copy. Okay, let's let's roll with two. That's fine. Let's just add a couple more words of paradise to it. Uh, that's, you sound like a Nitfit connoisseur yourself as well then. Yeah, uh, very much not. <laughs> uh, and then the sideboard. Uh, so you saw there's a, um, a Savannah Tropical Island in there. So the Savannah, uh, those are for three Foster Storm and two Source of Clashes in the sideboard. Let's go along with two chokes and endurance, another crisp, two force of vigor, two member trap, a shriek more, and a progenitus. So honestly, at this point, sorry to interrupt you there. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, at this point, you might almost consider running brainstorm in the stack. <laughs> it's yeah, it's just like yeah. I mean, if we can actually pull off the blue, I mean, I get the idea of a flusterstorm, right? The idea is you would want it against decks that probably don't have Iceland in the first place. Mm -hmm. But we we tried brainstorm and elves like many years ago, and it was kind of okay, not that great really. You lost a lot of tempo, but I mean, this deck is already dedicated to losing a lot of tempo anyway. So yeah, I I, I wonder. I think there's a real cost to like having. A triple island in play if you're not against combo if that makes sense i think a lot of the time you're fetching like a basic forest to get a, a, a elvish reclaimer out and then like turn mm -hmm. two you're sacrificing something to go and get a cradle and then getting a blue land into play it doesn't kind of fit the fetching curve on yeah it. also i think like the stick, the stick doesn't really have the extra mana to cast brings like it's, it's, it's weird true. as it sounds like yeah i think no, you want to no, like very, maximize all your true. mana yeah for like if you know reclaim active yeah or like um reclaim activations uh, like this deck even has two sp Siemens uh, Elf Spirit Guides in addition to like all that other fast mana. So mm -hmm. uh, I I I'm, I gotta say like I'm a little surprised um to not see like more hate bears in the sideboard, especially because you have the Savannah. You you could also like run things like Meddling Mage, or may uh, maybe not Meddling Mage, but like can Canonist or like you know. I mean, I, I you already I, have I, a couple I, of those hate bears in the main deck in the first place, like Opposition Agent, yeah. Great Engineer and stuff. I guess yeah. if you, uh, yeah, if you yeah, if you think that the, those are like enough, then you know that that's fine. That's fine. But uh, yeah, you know what I would want. I you, you guys know exactly what trade bear I want. This deck. You want oh, the get, mind sensor? No, yeah, exactly. Dude, oh, I was gonna say like, guarantee, <laughs> dude. There's <laughs> opposition. Opposition agent is yeah. literally the better mind sensor. Like what? yeah, but <laughs> it, it it's it's not a bird wizard. It doesn't have flying. It doesn't <laughs> come cares, in instant speed. Dude, it's not shit. painted by Rebecca Gray, so I don't it's know. Not, it's not. It can It also can't block a Delver. Like the opposition agent can't block a Delver. Yeah, so yeah. There we go. That's, 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 that's that. Yeah. That's that. If you um, if you order if you order mind sensor on wish, that's what you get. Yeah. <laughs> But you know, th th but there's also no on top effect, right? Because like every every time I see like feed artisan, there's like, like some sometimes there's like a Quirin Ranger or like or like or like a script ranger or like some other if, um, effect that on taps the, the fiend artisan. You know, yeah, so in in this decklist, at least um, from the evolution of it, we didn't really have a script ranger on there. There are still up until very recently, like right before the stacklist, I guess, there there were still some copies of Wirewood Symbiote and like a one-off Elfish Visionary. Sometimes you would like lately see a Quarian Ranger in there just because there's like great interactions with it. Um uh, but also of course the fetch pattern always lends itself to it if you have turn one acceleration, but then you're missing a land drop, then you can send it for the Quarian Ranger and like fix your mana until almost like the end of the game. Uh, but yeah, instead we're just, what are, what are we actually filling up with? Uh, I guess just like a ro lot of stuff here and there, right? Like a crop rotation, uh, the Marin of Clan Nile Tooth and stuff, scavenging yeah. ooze. Sylvan Safekeeper, okay, I guess that's yeah. some real dedication to trying to protect your, your, um, what's it called? Fiend artisan. Yeah, or just your hate bears, like. True. Yeah. 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 But you like, like. Right, like, yeah. ju like Julian, but like, what do you think, like, from a, from like an elves player perspective, like, is this like something, like, is, is this like sacrilegious for like, for like people who are playing a lot of like regular elves, or is this like, I, I would know? say it's more close to mine, uh, to Maverick, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, like, this is if you ask me, um, the same question about a deck that's totally not elves anymore, um, <laughs> but still puts up like amazing results, so. There's nothing sacrilegious left. Like you basically tore out everything, and you're still left. Like what's there from the original deck? Like basically natural order, and and like everybody runs greens and Zenith, I guess. Like literally the last thing that's left of, of something that used to be Fs is natural order, and yeah. I mean that's not a bad card at all. 
Oh man, also like those other sorrow shepherds, like talking talking about like non elves, like this deck barely has any elves in it. So well, the, the shepherds shepherd are just is... to make your spells. Yeah, basically. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. I mean, not, uh, actually, I, I, I just said uh, the only thing that's left of elves is natural order, but the one big thing that's actually still left of elves is, of course, uh, Gaia's Cradle. Yep. And that's how the deck really makes it work, right? Because this deck is insanely mana hungry. You always got something to do. Yeah. Uh, which is also, we talked about it, right? A reason why, another reason why you don't really want or need Brainstorm in there. Um, you, you still have your mana to spend. Yeah. But it's, yeah, this, I think. so many tutors. It's natural order, green suns, and finale suns. And it's just built to maximize Guy's Cradle, right? Yeah. Well, what's cool about it is we had it on camera, like a pretty similar build to this on camera at the energy event in Newark that I commented on the weekend. And I, I talked about all the stuff that these new iterations or, or this new deck can do. And then it just won the third turn. <laughs> it's just like you couldn't distinguish it from any other natural order deck. It's just like accelerate in the first turn, some dudes on the second turn, get you for 24 in the third turn. Okay, let's move on to the next game. It's a powerful play pattern. Free wins are so insanely important if you want to win a tournament. You gotta get lucky, you gotta get some free wins, and then for some of the matches you actually have to try. Have to yeah. play okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or play Naya Stompy. I mean, if you play yeah. Naya Stompy and do, and play well, then you win the tournament. I'm I'm okay. terrified of these cards coming online. This deck just it. I'm <laughs> in shock still. It beat me so yeah. badly. <laughs> I, I wanna I wanna, I, wanna, dude, I wanna play the mirror so badly, really. Oh my just God. like. <laughs> You should, are you saying you should actually buy some white plume? What, what's it called? Plumber Adventurer? Yes, you should. The card is actually, let me look it up. Okay, I'm going to check it out. Card Market. It is. Here incredible. we go. Well, what, what are your predictions? How, how much is it? Five euros? Oh, you're very far off. It's like oh, 14 cents. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> it's like 20 yeah. cents. Oh, fuck. You can, for five euros, you could buy like 100 or something. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy four right now. Yeah. Holy shit. I like, probably oh. should, I should, like, I mean, if this card actually has legs and legacy, like, 20 cents is just, like, way too low, right? It it absolutely has legs and legacy. 100%. Yeah, but I think, like, the problem with the, I like how, the, how, how, how Kai, uh, sorry. I like no, how I, Callum is actually buying some of them right now because he's scared that we might buy all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just checking out, check out the prices. Yeah. Like, I'm just wondering, like, if this, uh, if this card has, like, any home in, uh, like, like, a place in any other archetype in Legacy, you know, because, like, the, I, th I think the, the main selling part of this, of this card is, like, the, the, manning, the mana fixing part, right? Like, ex um, in addition to, like, a, a massive body. In, in addition well, to being a 5-5 five, five, uh, Vigilance haste, yeah? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, like, so here's the thing. Like, like if, if you don't play this card in a in a um, Ancient Tomb deck, like, it, it's kind of it's kind of like an okay card, you know? I mean, that's what like, you can say about a lot of, like, of these, these stompy <laughs> yeah. creature decks, right? But I, I see what sure, you're saying, I, I, right? I, I, it it, it requires, like, yeah, like, some very specific I guess, like, most of the cards, like, except maybe, like, Minsk and Boo. Like, Minsk and Boo is still, like, crazy powerful, even on a, in a regular deck with, like, regular lands. There is, mm -hmm. There's there's a, a white stumpy deck that is playing. There's another initiative card. It's uh, called Season Dungeoneer, and it's four mana this time, three and a white and a three four. When ETBs, you take the initiative. Whenever you attack, target attacking cleric, rogue, warrior, or wizard games protection from creatures until end of turn. It explores. <laughs> so this is like when it attacks, you can target itself or you can target the white plume adventurer on a yeah, because it's a cleric, and then they can't be blocked basically. These two kind of come with each other. So um. Because when you say it explores, you go one further into the dungeon. So this just speeds up the clock even more. So. Oh, oh my god. Oh god. Okay, okay. Dude, I, I, I'm I, desperate to play this now. So yeah, so people have been playing in paper. It's uh, like Red White Initiative, it's been called. So yeah, it's been some guys been playing at my local store. Um, Alex Rea, another friend from London. I believe he qualified for ELM at the Island event playing it. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, Peter White was playing it. Sorry, Peter White qualified for the ELM playing this initiative deck as well oh sweet who's yeah. power 22 yeah when awesome. you think about it like that that second dungeon that makes you lose five life it's actually a little bit insane yeah it's like 25 percent of your total life total it's a lot it's it's a lot yeah 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 so you're coming around to it now i'm <laughs> I, I, i've run like 10 circles around it by now I'm not only like <laughs> the, the one after lose five life is you just draw a card and then you get to look at the top 10 and get a creature but three one one counts on it against hexproof yeah, okay, I'm convinced, like, this needs to be banned. Wizards, please, <laughs> somebody set up the sign. This is what people were doing in Pauper, by the way. This was, um, it, it got bought <laughs> really in Pauper. There's a bunch of commons with this, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I don't know what Wizards was thinking. I think we need to, we need to call this episode Julian Learns What Initiative Does. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I, I this is the, the whole left side of the dungeons, right? I, I still yeah, don't know what yeah. the right side does, but the, the left right side, side sounds is, pretty appealing. The right side is when they kill your initiative creature, basically. So you scry two, then you create a treasure token, uh, then you make a four one with menace, and then yeah. Okay, okay. Well, uh, why? Yeah. <laughs> You're always gonna have some creatures left. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, um, I guess those those are the two top eights. Uh, you yeah. very much recommend uh, coming back to this event. Do do we already know when there's gonna be future ones? Um, the ne next like big thing like this will probably be next year. Um, but I do know that there are plans to do basically a big one on Saturday. Same thing, probably like 128 players is the aim. Mm -hmm. And then on the Sunday, there's going to be a team event, which will be Legacy and Modern, 100% Legacy at least. I'm not mm -hmm. sure on the last format, but like team events are just awesome. So yeah, anyone who was thinking about coming to this one, I again, I just cannot recommend it enough. Like the TOs are just amazing. The whole place was like just nice. Tons of bathrooms, Kai. All clean. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sign um, me up. There was like... <laughs> Uh, ca cafeteria like doing lunch and coffees constantly and stuff um, oh you're saying they also had water they had water as well they had water everything a kind needs perfect Ooh, yeah. shit yeah yeah like just, yeah. Just, just watch me like spending like eight hours in the bathroom and... <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that <laughs> would be quite concerning but okay <laughs> yeah love it and then yeah we we went out drinking after each day as well um it's it's not far from the birmingham center and there's got a lot of good pubs there and stuff oh that's just like so great when when the actually went side it's not like way outside the city but no. you can actually like go somewhere from there um i i really only had that for a couple of events during the like recent years before COVID, and i really grow to appreciate that just yeah, like so yeah, much yeah. it's it's pretty close and yeah there's there was tons of accommodation like nearby i stayed in an airbnb that was like a 15 minute walk away and stuff really oh man easy. dude yeah. i love that so yeah, yeah i'll get you guys to come <sighs> next time oh i'd love to dude I, I absolutely love to this year has been like super stressful but well, I'm, I'm not gonna go super deep into it. My boss actually came came into my my office today, and he was like, "Oh, dude, we we need more people to help you." And this is like the first time in literally ten years that my boss told me we we need more people to help me. Like I, I was like almost like, "What the fuck?" Like really? <laughs> you, you you finally find out now? Yeah, we do. We need like two more people. <laughs> so oh yeah, cool. Um, in speaking of like like tournaments and stuff, uh, we we have a question from. Uh, Discord supporter uh, Kabota Muliper. Tom, sorry, I still don't know how to properly pronounce your nickname. Apparently, it means like face punching gnome. And Tom is asking, are the three of you going to play in the team trios event at four seasons together? If so, which format? And before we get into that, I have to preface that I literally learned today that I probably have to go to Kenya for like a month. I'm still trying to schedule it that way that I can go to Four Seasons, but I literally, like, right before I left work today, I, I was just told that. So I, I can't say for sure, but I still really, really want to go to Four Seasons. Uh -oh. So uh -oh, chance I, I couldn't... Huh? Uh oh, spaghetti. -o. Spaghetti? <laughs> Don't worry, it's a, it's a stupid saying. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, oh. Have you never heard <laughs> when you say, uh oh, spaghetti? -o? Hey, oh, spaghetti! Oh, no, 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 never mind. It's just me being stupid. <laughs> no, it's probably like you being a native speaker and, and us just like not having yeah, yeah, heard of about that. <laughs> well, hopefully, you can make it. If not, Kai, we need to find a new modern player. I. Uh, yeah, well, you, yeah, you know yeah, what's actually yeah, gonna yeah, happen. Yes, yes, please, you know yes, what's please. actually gonna happen. We are gonna push uh, you to modern, and Kai is gonna play legacy, and then you just pick up just no, you know, like, or somebody. Like, like, no, what, what if Callum plays modern? I play vintage, and we look. We're desperately looking <laughs> for a legacy. <laughs> we're desperately <laughs> looking for a legacy player, but they're like so rare. Like we can't really, we can't find them. It's so so I mean, hard. You know what you could do? You like in the event that I oh, actually man. can't make it. You just like pick the stupidest modern deck you can find. You okay. sit just like literally anyone in the middle, and you just like play the deck. And, and tell him like what to do like you bring your little brother or something and he has never played magic before and just like as you play your match every like 10 seconds you look over and you tell him hey do this do that and you just like try the easiest stupidest modern deck you can find and maybe you're gonna like squeeze out a win here and there and that's how it's gonna work <laughs> oh, oh maybe God. you know what if that we sounds can, so if, stressful if but we, like if we can get justin i'll play modern we, we, can, uh, we could also like print some t-shirts and go like, like you and I, we're going to just go like through the venue <laughs> and go like looking for like, like those like free, <laughs> like those like free hug t-shirts, no. you know, like instead we go like looking for a legacy player, you know, for tomorrow. Yeah, we're a legacy podcast. We're looking for a legacy player. We're sorry. <laughs> Please. <laughs> we tried ourselves, but couldn't win anything. We couldn't find anyone. Yeah. Imagine if you win the tournament then. Oh no. <laughs> but yeah, originally I think the setup um we talked about was like Kai is going to play Vintage, right? Because Kai actually owns his own Vintage deck. And then was between between uh, modern I was gonna say between Callum and me who would play Legacy and who would play modern, 
And who was it actually? I think somebody stream decided that Callum gets to play Legacy. Yep. <laughs> that's how we make <laughs> like, decisions here. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, like I don't know where this is coming from, but like, like most people, like on my stream, like or like in general, think that Callum is like the like the most dedicated Legacy player of, um, <laughs> among the three of us, which I I, I found like absolutely crazy. You know, it's just like yeah, <laughs> like it's like the wrongest statement I've heard like in in, in decades. <laughs> but I don't know about that. Like I've mostly known Callum as a legacy player but honestly like i think you you actually have a wider range in, in formats than i do i know you play like pioneer modern uh, all that kind of stuff yeah i've dipped my toes and fingers and lots of things yeah i i'm like super dedicated to legacy i i had like a season or two in mkm where i was like insanely successful on on in modern and i love vintage but i'm that's pretty much it yeah unless there's old extended and stuff <laughs> yeah I, I haven't been playing modern for quite a while so i would if i did end up being need to play it i, I wouldn't mind but i would need to like get a crash i I need to play a lot online too i mean okay let's let me ask you this like if you had to pick up a modern deck what would that be i know exactly what the answer is gonna be but i I don't know there's no painted deck right like you're like what could that well to to win with a team event or what i want to play modern because i know Uh, like second okay i want to play um time sieve with urza (laughs) can we go back to the first part of the question (laughs) (laughs) i want to play um like academy manufacturer and like um like I barely know any of the cards that you mentioned. It's basically a deck where you make like a hundred artifact tokens and you take infinite turns. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that, that sounds like like you. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I was so convinced you were, you were going to say Breach because apparently Breach is all apart. It is really good. So that's probably what I would play if we were playing to win and stuff. Mm-hmm, but like, mm-hmm. I don't I don't yeah. own Ragavans or Ren and Sixes or anything like that. So, yeah. I mean, there's some ways to I got you covered. Cool. Okay. Fine. Well, then, yeah, we could play Breach. <laughs> cool. So yeah, let's figure that out. I have, I have to figure out which flights I'm gonna take. I think it's gonna be like the weekend of the second to the fourth of December, right? Yeah, it's exactly. Third and fourth Pretty early in December. Yeah. Okay, I, I work it out because I have to be in Kenya by mid-November, and technically I'm supposed to stay there for a month, but I guess I could cut it short a little bit, and then then we'll figure it out. I, I definitely keep you and the guys and and uh, Discord and everybody updated. Cool, we'll, please. We'll make this work. Fingers crossed. I don't want to play modern. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say like I I hope I get, I'm gonna get to see you. It's like no no I don't want to play modern. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, <laughs> well no that's that's what I said just reading between the lines you know like yeah. I really want your trip to go well Julian please I hope things work out so you can come to Four Seasons as well. <laughs> <laughs> cool cool. Uh, second question of the night coming to us from Bob Wang uh, host of the Elo Potter podcasts Elo Potter <laughs> what is that? the Elo Pothead podcasts anyway. What do Japanese players think about the world sticker goblin? You you know what we mean, right? It's because, because of like a completely different language, and Bob yeah. is wondering what what Japanese players are going to think about that. So, Callum, what do you think? Because like the me- <laughs> <laughs> put me on the spot here. It's like it's like asking the doomsday questions in one of the last episodes, saying, "So, Julian, what do you think here?" Do you think well, well, dude, I almost got a five oath doomsday on my first league with it in like ten years or something, which is, which is absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Like, I yeah. only didn't get the five oath because yeah. I timed out like, in the last round. <laughs> like, like who do you pay to get all those tips? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but like about those, like yeah, yeah this uh, this is a uh, ve- ve- very good to very good to question Julian Sung um, about those uh, Japanese players. Uh, am, am I Sun or am I Kun? Like there's no, there's all these. Yo, different... you, you, you're definitely way too old for for Kun. You, you're definitely Sun. <laughs> Uh, and and you still being called a coon by your mom or something? Uh, no, nah, my my mom calls me Chang, which is more like you know you you call ba- babies you call Chun. <laughs> okay, and, like very small kids, yeah. Okay, but, I, I, you know. I'll stay with Sun then. <laughs> so Julian Sang, um, I did not know that this product it was only released in English, uh, and like for the longest time I, th- I thought there's like a Japanese version of this because Japanese are absolute terrible at like alphabetic letters and like like english vocabulary and, and so on yeah so i and i have not been to to japan um for like a couple of months so i literally don't know how th- how this goes but i feel a little offended like as a japanese i kind of feel a little offended that 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 there's no like japanese hiragana katagana kanji version of this goblin you know uh this is really like print one Dude, and, imagine uh, like if they, if they print it the other way around and then we have to like count this a certain oh, yeah, number like, of katakana. yeah just like, like go yeah, go like kanjis already you just like you know just just do her homework <laughs> <laughs> Noob. Uh, I, I guess i guess um those letters are a little more common in Chap- japan but uh 
Yeah, they are. Ask like a random person on the street to to show them like what is a vowel and what is not. Oh, uh, I mean, they, they don't know. They don't, I, like I had to look it up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I like I think I'll be concerned if um if those cards become like more popular and like more competitive because um because like Japanese really care about competitive magic. You know, it doesn't matter which format. Even Commander people go like super super crazy on like. Uh -huh. spike spiky decks so like if, if this goblin picks up in like in, in popularity i'll be a little bit concerned uh because it might just uh you know like mess around with some some tournament gameplay uh but seriously like you know visit the coast they gotta get their shit together and uh print some japanese versions of those goblins because otherwise I. but the I thing is like how how would you do that like are you gonna count vowels on, on like japanese words it doesn't work i think it just has to say like the actual number saying if you get this sticker sheet it makes this much mana oh you mean yeah uh yeah but oh, that's so unflavorful like i, I agree I, I, least think, flavorful thing I, yeah, could imagine. I think this is a really egregious mistake from them like it just didn't need to be legal in a in a format that's played competitively like that's that's yeah. the okay. underlying issue i mean they basically said right all the non acorn cards are not going to be competitive yeah well yeah uh, <laughs> yeah here we are yeah. uh by the way i saw comet the planeswalker dog twice over the weekend as well um, I'll see. Yeah, I, still, I still haven't seen a, a version of the Planeswalker doc that I can actually read. Oh, so basically it's like four mana, red and white and two, and then you roll a dice when you activate it. And then if you roll a six, you like add one to its loyalty, then you get to activate it two more times. If you get like a one or a two, you make five squirrels or two squirrels or something, and they have haste. And then <laughs> it's a slight difference. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you make you make two squirrels and they have haste. And then another one of the ones is you can return a card with mana value two or less from your gravy to your hand. I was sitting next to a four color player that's playing against DNT. He was really behind on board, and then he he rolled like two or three sixes in a row. So he ended the turn with like six squirrels in play and did nine damage to their face. Oh, man. <laughs> and then one Damn. next turn. <laughs> And then the another, dog, man. another the game, dog is upon us. someone said it just did like literally did nothing. So yeah, it's pretty high rolly. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> yeah, I'm super excited for the dog. Dog Stompy, yeah. here we go. Yeah, dog Stompy, oh. yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, like, we, a what? year from now we're gonna cry for the dog to be banned. What's the uh, red white filter land so that Andy can add it to his list? Uh Boros um, like, like, whatever. Mean, like, I mean, is is there one like I don't even know if those filter lens are like complete like, if that's like a complete cycle. Uh, I, d I definitely be, know that there's like, like a the Shadow Moor one. I think it's like Rugged Prairie. Oh, okay, cool. There we go. Andy needs to play some Rugged Prairie and Comet Space Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Well, this is actually even better. You can get like double red, double white, or white and a red. Yeah, this is like an upgrade. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is another card that needs to be banned. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Next question coming up uh, from new Patreon, Gary Fox. And Gary's asking... Mm, if taking questions for a future episode, wondering host's opinion on optimal strategies to win small and medium events where you do and don't know the field. Presumably, presumably get lucky is less of a solid approach here. And to, to put this into some context, Gary recently... Did, did he actually win the tournament? I think he won the tournament, right? That, that he talked about the top four? He top four at least. I... He top four at least. I, I actually don't remember the exact outcome, but he did really, really well with it. And he put that thing into action that um, at least I keep talking about quite a lot, right? Where you, you really only focus on something like the top four or five decks of the meta game, and you want to be prepared against them and have a really strong game plan against them. And then for, for all the other decks, you play something proactive, so you can sometimes even just steamroll them, uh, even if, if you don't have like, a lot of sideboard cards. And he really put that into action, and he wrote an article about that. And he was very, very happy uh, with implementing that kind of strategy. And now he's basically wondering, can you do the same in a local field? So, guys, how, how do you approach like your, your locals when, when you play a tournament? Yeah, it does depend a bit on the deck. Like, So, for, for context, he played White Black Humans, the like, Reef Blue Cheap has made. And he knew that he couldn't beat DNT without like, or DNT or Maverick or that kind of style of deck without dedicating like 10 sideboard slots. So he just didn't play any. It's like, if I play against them, I'm going to lose. I can try at least. But he wants to make sure that he does actually steamroll Delver and Control, which he did. So, I like that approach a lot, actually. Yeah, I love it as well. So yeah, the question really depends on your kind of deck. Like, what, like White Black Humans is the perfect thing where it makes the most sense because you you are favored but you want to steamroll these like well like higher played decks like Delver and control 
Yeah, it's actually a hard deck to answer right. without give, being given like a deck to think right, about. So, like, so, so Gary's asking about the optimal strategies to win to win those like small medium events. Um, yeah, a small one. I think you you if, I, if I, you know the field, then you can metagame for it. If you don't know the field, I think you just play the same way like a big event and just yeah, place your deck strengths and stuff. Sorry. Sure. Uh, I guess. I guess you know. Um, like knowing the field is like good and all, but um. If there's like one advice I can give uh, Gary is like to, to just do your mulligans. Just just do them. Uh, don't be lazy. I see like way too many people in local events who are like way too lazy to like shuffle their hands back in, take a new grab seven. Like people only mulligan like un um, if their hand is like absolute dog shit, right? But like if those like are like just borderline not keepable, like some people keep them and it's like, hey, dude, like just, just just get another seven, you know, like those mulligans are not that bad. Like a, a, a good six is so much better than like a medium seven, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I that mean, depends it, a lot I, on I, the deck. Yeah, like, I, I uh, guess I, I, I don't even know if that's like a good advice, um, but just don't be lazy. That's like but is, a, is that specific for like small and medium sized tournaments? Uh, not necessarily, but maybe like for, for, <laughs> I just like, wanted to say something. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess like I guess like for um for small um tournaments, like people really don't care enough. Uh, so like they they tend to be a little like lazy, maybe like for bigger events that they, they would probably just go all okay, in, you okay, know, like I to do like that. the best they can. But especially for like those like small, I don't know, like sixteen player events or what have you. Um, you know, people kind of want to just jam cards immediately and don't want to like delay the game by like a minute or two just because they have to like reshuffle the deck yeah i will add so so he's he's phrasing the question on he took his approach to get lucky and get the right pairings i think it's less relevant in a smaller event because in smaller events people are not going to play the top decks as much it means you are going to play against more random stuff and you just have less control over your pairings because there's less people as well you're not gonna like smaller events are also gonna have less number of rounds so you're not gonna like you know make it out of the first four or five rounds and then expect to play against the top decks it might be like a four or five round event and then you're going to play against fairly random stuff every round so i think getting lucky is less valid um than here and you probably want to try and diversify your sideboard and, and right. as much as you can and be good against the field at large whereas in a bigger event you can try and dodge the early rounds get lucky there and then you've hit your expected expected metagame at the top right yeah also i, also, I guess i get also i guess like the the overall um like uh power level is pretty low in like local like small medium sized uh, events like for example the other day i had to explain my opponent what doomsday does you know like things like that right like it, it doesn't happen all the time but like sometimes you have those moments where like yeah well i mean you know like if, if you really don't know what my deck is doing then uh there might be a little like a, a problem there yeah w one thing that i've noticed uh in smaller events, especially local smaller events, where basically everybody knows what everybody else is playing, is there's this dynamic of technically you could really bend over backwards and try to like make your deck as insanely good as you can against like the basically the best player's deck in the room. Like you know there's gonna be like two or three people who are probably gonna win it out of this pool of ten people, and you really, really, really like overload your sideboard with cards against them. I guess you can do that, but it's also I don't know, man. Like these local events, there's not that much on the line, and it. That, I don't really want to be doing that, right? I I would strongly, strongly, strongly recommend against doing that because it'll just not make you a better player. It... It's not going to make you a better player. And I think it's also like, I, I'm not going to go as far as to say it's toxic for the community, but it feels just like when you win that way, sometimes it can come off like, oh yeah, cool, whatever, yeah. man. I, I never ever make any changes to my deck based on what I know that regulars at my group play. I actually don't even mulligan based on what they play. Like game ones, I always mulligan as if I was in the blind because I think it just gives you better heuristics on yeah. how to play the game. Actually, yeah, it's funny you say yeah, that. You, you can also like, you know, come out as a really cool person if you um, if you uh, meta game uh, um, for a meta game, which is absolutely not your meta game. You know, mm -hmm. just 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 put some extra hate against um, I don't know, against Moon Stompy, and then there is no Moon Stompy at your event. Yes. I remember when Kai was and playing etc. Kai, remember when you play, were playing it in Satara in, in June or July, I believe? And you told me, like, you played a weaker version of Doomsday because you didn't, like, want to crush all the local people, and then you literally just won the tournament. Exa yeah, I mean, like, it, it sounds so bad, like, if, 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 if you say it like that, but... Uh, <laughs> like, it sounds, like, actually sounds cause, really cause, nice. Cause, yeah, because, like, the, so, uh, he, so here's my, he was, like, my attention, right? Like, like um, joining that event for the first time, and, my, like, my goal was not to play a lot of Magic, but, like, more to, like, talk with people for for the first time or like seeing julian after like you know a few years and um 
it's basically like hanging out was like that was like the priority number one and priority number two is like okay i guess we're also going to play some legacy and mm -hmm. uh the deck i played was really not that good um i gotta say but and so please don't copy it if you, if you, if you <laughs> ever see that on the internet um but like even with even with like mediocre decks you, you just you just happen to go undefeated sometimes so uh just just, just don't like be chill <laughs> at the event because i was pretty chill at that day i remember you definitely were yeah i i i had so many good conversations like like between rounds and like and it's like oh my, oh man I, I guess we have to play magic again you know like, i kind of wanted to keep talking and um and it takes like so much like pressure off of you and maybe that's also like not a bad strategy for like events in general i think you know even like bigger events yeah, yeah, I, I like that. And I, I was going to say, like, what Callum said, um, basically about how you maybe don't want to dilute your deck to just, like, try to to target the local mid again, but instead just basically play in the blind and build in the blind. That's literally what some of the best legacy players I've ever played with have told me how, how they approach, like, our local tournaments. And when you said that, that's... I mean, mm. it's it's just maybe coincidence, but it I think that's the way how, how as you mentioned, oh, you like, me very early on, how you get really good. <laughs> I do it on Magic Online as well. Like, I've played enough to know what most people usually play, but I just, again, game ones, I just don't. Unless it's like a PTQ, maybe I'll think about it, but like, I d typically do that. And I've been rewarded tons of times because, especially on Magic Online, people can switch decks a lot. And so I've been like, okay, this person always plays Reanimator, but I'm just going to keep this good hand because you never know. And then they're on Delver this time. Mm -hmm. So oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it works out, but yeah, I really think just knowing what your deck is capable of in the average is what makes you more proficient with the deck and a better player overall cool sweet so we got one more last question for the night and that's coming to us from fire ballad i'm not gonna read out the entire question it's pretty long but it basically goes into the idea of what if wizards created a complete i want to say second instance of magic that has all the universes beyond cards in it and cultivated that and printed even more universes be uh, beyond stuff into that and, and really made it a thing. While on a completely different second track, we have OG magic, right? Just like magic keeps on existing as it used to, but all universes beyond stuff is not legal in, in that. And I think Paya didn't really have like a proper question for us, but it was more like, hey, what do you think about this? And I have some thoughts on that, but guys, what? Maybe we have you go first. What do you Wait, think? Hold on. What was that? What does that even mean? Like universe beyond? Universe like, beyond is like when, when they have like and... yeah, all these uh, external franchises that come into Magic. Oh, okay. Yeah, my my thought on this question is a little bit scathing. I'm gonna be honest. Um, having a separate thing is just not realistic. Having wizards make something separate, like from universe beyond or the universe beyond format, like neither thing is gonna happen. Some people might prefer if it did, some people might not. I, I think it's a bit of a non-issue in the grand scheme of things. And so that coupled with it's not going to happen, I just, I haven't really thought about it much and I won't. Um, I, like, I, I don't mind mixing them, though, um, them both together. Like, I don't think that they need to be um, like separated because like most Magic players, like they ha um, have a lot of like other um, like um, fa favorite things, you know, like, like mu music they like or like other games they play. And uh, like the uh, like other pop cultures they like, and I think a lot of those other interests are pretty well like co um, connected to magic in those uh, in those supplementary like uh, uni universe beyond sets. I think like for example, like I'm uh, speaking of myself, like I play I played Warhammer myself uh, when I was uh, 14, 15, 16 years old, and and back then I didn't know that Warhammer is gonna like eventually you know do like a collaboration with Magic the Gathering, um, but like. Yeah, just being like a high school student, I, I thought that those like two things were incredibly cool, like Magic and Warhammer, just played them. This Warhammer and, um, set has made me order lots of the cards, build an EDH deck with them, and like just be generally very excited for the set. And it's the first like new cards I've bought in ages. So yeah. yeah it's funny. It's the first time in, in many years that I also own an EDH deck now. Yeah. yeah <laughs> oh, yeah. there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's so cool. So yeah, for, from my side, um, first of all, like kind of mentioned, right? Um the it's probably not even worth thinking about all that much because it's just like completely unthinkable that wizards would actually do that because that's that's some insane resource investment from them to basically maintain those two things at the same time and give them enough attention to actually make them worth it. Uh, but the other thing to me is it basically already exists. Like if you want to play without Universes Beyond, 
there's literally nothing stopping you to, from doing that. Um, I mean, we can never hope for Wizards to actually support something like a split off that's like, oh, we got like this heritage format, right? That people talked about, like no supplemental products. I mean, it already exists and you can make that and you can play in that. It, it's just like Wizards would never support that. And that's basically the beginning and the end of it. Not not in the sense that it's dead uh, on arrival, but more like it's not going to support, going to get support from Wizards. And I think that's what Fire was asking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Yeah. In, in a way, uh, I put this in the show notes, it, it reminded me a little bit of uh, World of Warcraft Vanilla, where people for like decades were like, oh, World of Warcraft Vanilla was so amazing. And I, I agree. That's like the only six months of my life where I played World of Warcraft was during Vanilla, Vanilla and I liked it. And people kept asking for it to come back and it came back and actually it was supported by Blizzard and I think people enjoy it. But I don't see that um, Wizards would have any kind of interest in ever doing that, right? Yeah. No, it's, it's just splintering a, a group, big group of people. And by doing that, they're alienating one from like their new products as well. Like, yeah. They're saying this isn't for you, whereas 99% of them are not buying it. The 1% might or pay attention or look interested as well. Like It doesn't make any sense on any level to me. Yeah, I mean, magic formats are already like complicated enough. Like nobody understands yeah. how these. What, what, what do they have? Like ar- 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 alchemy and stuff. Like nobody knows how that works. Se- secret layers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I used to religiously keep up with absolutely everything, and I still like keep up with every format. I pay attention, but even I've gotten lost in the source with all these sets and stuff. I, it's hard to keep but up. The thing is, like, I, re- I somewhat got into Pioneer because I I commentated on the on the energy series, mm-hmm. and I gotta say, like, Pioneer is like way, way, way more broken than I ever thought about. Like, whenever we, we cut to the Pioneer table, it has like the most broken stuff on the table. Whereas, like, mm-hmm. the- oh, good guys, I, g- I gotta tell the story. So, um, uh, Anorak and I we were commentating the the team event, and it was like Pioneer Modern Legacy. And you know what we had in the legacy seat at, and during one of the rounds? We had the four color control mirror. Mm. Oh my goodness. And we, we even, like at some, we st- I think we started out with modern, and then when that game ended, we cut to pioneer. When that game ended, we cut to, uh, to legacy. And the moment I saw the board, and it was like 10, 12 minutes into the round, and both players had like seven lands and cards and nothing else, I was like, oh my God, we're like never going to leave this table. <laughs> <laughs> and literally, the legacy game was still stuck in game one when the modern and the pioneer table already concluded and one of the teams had won so the legacy players <laughs> didn't even forget to finish their first oh game after God. like 40 minutes or something they deserve <laughs> each other yeah very much and i think i actually i would have loved to see the natural conclusion of that because anorak and i we were talking about you know maybe there's stacking coming up because people were constantly like dredging loam for for like trying to waste lock the opponent's caracas but then you could find like force of negation to to stop that or or, yeah. or you but, use like wait, endurance like, to stop yourself from decking I thought they play like 80 card decks. Yeah, yeah, but it, it could have been a thing. The, <laughs> the only problem is like once you fight endurance, it, it takes like all the much longer. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So before we close it out, there, there, there was some big, uh, where is it? Big, big news. Big news for, for big the advantage. L- Big news for big advantage. I think I actually have that over here somewhere. All right, Pox time, baby. No, the wrong button. Oh. This one. <laughs> big, big advantage. <laughs> oh, so professional. Yeah, some super big news coming in right before the start of the podcast. And that is, we're actually going to have Eternal Weekend 2002. <laughs> <laughs> in the show notes. It's going to be 2022. Uh, and nobody thought we would actually still have Eternal Weekend this year. For those who don't know, those are basically each continent's legacy and vintage championships. There's going to be a dedicated legacy event. There's going to be a dedicated vintage event with insanely amazing prices uh maybe not so much usually for the top 16 but or top 32 even but for the winner there's gonna be in some prices and we're gonna get to that in a moment but before we do that let's quickly announce the locations and dates so we have the north american eternal weekend in philadelphia it's gonna be run by car titan it's gonna take place from the 9th till the 11th of december for Asia, we're going to go to, it says Aichi, which I thought was like a province. It's near Nagoya in Japan. Going to be run by Big Magic. And that's going to take place even earlier from the 26th of November till the 27th. So basically in a month next from month, now. Next month, yeah. It's next yeah. month, damn. Got to book yeah. flights. Shit. And then yeah, European you... fans, get ready for sadness. Yeah, drum roll. Europe is not going to get an event. And from wop, what wop, we hear, um, we can't disclose anything we hear that just like wasn't any tournament organizer up for it (laughs) so we're gonna run in the magic online it's gonna take place from uh, from the 10th to 11th december which is basically the same weekend as the north american one 
and also the same weekend as the legacy showcase qualifier was which is one of the four biggest legacy tournaments of the year um, now five i guess <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, that's somewhat unfortunate from the timing uh it's gonna start at least at a very european friendly time and that's 10 a.m in the morning uh signups are gonna start three days earlier signups are gonna start on the 7th december at 7 p.m and i recommend signing up early on ish because it's capped at 672 players i think the one thing that might stop it from capping out is that this time there are not gonna be any god accounts so you can't buy the entrance fee and get a god account a week early with all the cards in it so you literally have to own your own cards to play in that it, yeah that that's a good point but also like the the car titan uh, philadelphia uh same event weekend. being like on the, in the same weekend that's like uh, that's huge i think because a lot of oh yeah all the americans, americans are not gonna play right, it, right? Uh, yeah yeah so it is more like a european one but kind of wish it was a different weekend so we could have so everyone day. please chill you don't have to rush you know just like sign up like five minutes ago uh, five minutes <laughs> <Yeah>. before <laughs> the event. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe they're they're gonna be like they they really want to make sure that it's gonna be mostly European event. So they're like, hey, let's make it easier for the Europeans. We're just gonna like have one or two less rounds because there's there's not gonna be any like players from America or something. I don't know. Mm. Or maybe yeah, they so, just yeah. didn't think about it all that much. <laughs> more probably more likely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, guys, what do you think about this? I already saw some it, people actually like it, trying to Google flights to Japan. Yeah, like I so um Aichi is, is is an interesting uh decision because like um I think the the last few years um the big uh big magic has always um had the the event like in the in the uh, Yokohama area which is like uh, the south part of uh, of Japan, of Tokyo which is you know has good access from the airport um if you live in the in, the, in this overall like cent center part of Tokyo you can easily go there it might take you like an hour like an hour and a half. I've had I've had a blast like um the, the couple of times I played there. I'm a little surprised to see like a place like Aichi like Nagoya uh, because Nagoya I've been there once um and I got to say like this is probably like one of the most unattractive um cities in Japan. <laughs> it's so funny you say that I hear that like, about Nagoya yeah, all it, the time. Yeah, it, ha it has like it has like the most <laughs> mediocre food. Like I got to say like J like Japanese food is is generally on a very high level, but the the food like there's nothing special about Nagoya. So um I'm going to I'm going to warn you guys like if you want to book that flight just good luck you know uh it's it's going to be it's going to be great regardless but uh, please don't expect the the creme de la creme uh, food e explosion experience uh in Nagoya cuz uh it's not going to happen I'm sorry Are you going to go Kai? Uh dude I'm kind of tempted like I I, mean, I saw the <laughs> I, I saw the announcement announcement earlier and that's that's exactly the week before the four seasons event but the problem oh, yeah, the problem yeah. is that I already booked my flight to Japan on the 26th of December. That's like a month later. No. Oh my goodness. Can I, we actually I, quickly dude, I'm so, talk? I, I'm just yeah. so bad at booking flights seriously. No, like, no, no. I, this time it's not on human. Can we quickly talk about like I I know it's it's fancy to criticize Wizards of the Coast and stuff, but can you can we talk about how they literally announced one of the biggest events of the year for Eternal players? Like some of them four weeks ahead of time yeah like what the exactly. fuck so like yeah i so I, t I talked to a couple of my um like japanese like legacy uh friends you know like prior and like a lot of them just just can't make it because they already got plans on on that weekend or like they, they're on a i don't know they're on a on, on vacation or like they do something else or like on a, on a business trip or what have you yeah uh, you, you know and, what i'm wondering like I'm, I'm literally wondering what were they waiting for announcing this it's not like they, they confirmed the venues last week yeah, i would hope like, yeah that, I mean, <laughs> they must have had like a really good reason for this maybe they were trying to still find something for europe and then just like nothing ever came off it and they were like you know yeah. we really have to announce it now but this like so bad yeah. like, a, like for example a month like ahead. yeah like for example like the reason why, why they picked like a uh, um a weird place nagoya uh which is really just not really um accessible um except for like, people who already live in you know the the middle part of, of japan it it kind of it kind of sounds like it's like a a last minute like quick fix maybe because maybe some other locations didn't didn't work to last minute yeah uh, things like that you um, know when when I've talked to tos in the past about the, them scheduling events and for one of them I actually like a long time ago I even applied as as the manager of these these events and I got a lot of insight into that and and I think they they scheduled their venues like almost a year ahead or something. Right. I don't know how Wizards does it, or or like I mean, Wizards probably didn't schedule these these events, right? The, the TO does it, but Wizards has has to approach the TO about it, and I can see why nobody in Europe would be up for this if this is like this short notice. 
Yeah, I'm just like I'm, I'm shocked. Dude, maybe I think like Wizards was just way too busy doing like secret layers and like all that kind of <laughs> like and like like those like 30 anniversary shitty boosters. And <laughs> I mean, I mean to give them some credit. Um, I think COVID-wise, the situation in Europe has been that you can have these events for quite a while, but when you actually would have had to plan these events like a year ago, it wasn't all that clear. So maybe there's something. But overall, I'm I'm still just shocked that this is like Japan one month ahead of time like this is just not good enough quizzes we can do better oh yeah absolutely yeah yeah but let's talk about the awesome stuff so the awesome stuff is this time there's not only gonna be um insanely cool prizes for the winners this time there's also gonna be cool prizes for the top eight Callum, i wish we had had that when we made top eight right yep these promos <laughs> are absolutely stunning holy shit oh yeah it's yeah, if you can't see them, definitely Google them. We we can, I guess, put. Yeah, we're gonna link um, the the whole announcements in the show notes, and you're gonna mm -hmm. see those. And this is the first time I'm actually feeling tempted to to play a different Ponda. Yeah, uh, the two the two um, top eight promos are gonna be Ponda for Legacy and Gush for Vintage. Very good selection. Um, Wait, are those like regular? Like, are those like real magic cards? Those are real magic cards. Yeah. So you get to play. Can you imagine how expensive so they're gonna these, be? Like, wait, imagine wait, you get a playset wait, of ponda. Wait, does that mean like if you if you go like top eight in those events, you get like a single ponda and a single gush? I believe you get yeah. a single one. But that means that there's gonna be like what twelve of each. Wait, you you, you gotta win like four events then to, to get a whole playset. So I think there's these, only three events. I think these are gonna be worth like over a grand each, easy. Probably right. Yeah. I, I, from what I hear, like the the actual paintings, they go for like ten k. Yeah. Um, most of the time, so I could see those those ponda and gushes, like especially since the, the pondas, right? You want four of those in legacy, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, oh my goodness, it's, it's going to be almost unattainable apart from like one or two people in the world. Oh wow, it even says like Eternal Weekend yeah. 2022 Legacy. Damn, that's so cool. <laughs> this, this is the only card if I manage to get one that I'll play like a mismatching set. <laughs> Oh yeah. You know what this is like? This is actually the closest we ever got to something like, you know, championship rings like they have in North America mm -hmm. for like sports. I might actually try and get like some ultra or proxy with this art though. It's so nice, God. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I want it. I want to play with this card. God damn it. Uh, th th then you really got to make it clear that th that's almost like printing your own championship ring and putting it on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, I really like the design. I really but like it. I'll, Trust I'll me. take away the flavor text instead. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah. G Callum's favorite artwork, oh, flavor text or something. And the gush is yeah. just so cool as well. God. Yeah, the gush is also like, I, I love that it's like cool in, yeah. in the sense, like this is a gush, right? This these, is this is what these happens. These two cards just look really old school. Like they are legacy vintage cards looking. Oh, it's yeah. a super smart decision to make them old frame. Yeah. Anything else would have been a huge fail. Yeah, yeah. They are, yeah, amazing. In so speaking of that, actually, <laughs> the, 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 promos, uh, the the big paintings that you can win, they are new frame, but they are still gorgeous, right? Yeah, but the new frame, I mean, you are as well. Right, I think they gotta be new frame, right? Like, I, I don't think I've ever seen, like, old frame ones. Yeah. Do you want to give us a run through of what they are? Yeah, so for the Asian Legacy Championship, we have Gaia's Cradle. Yeah, with a pretty weird artwork, but I kind of like it. Even Dude, though I, I love it, those yeah. like purple trees, those yeah, are cool. absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Then for the Asian Vintage Championships, mm -hmm. it's almost my favorite. I want to say this is Bazaar of Baghdad. Uh, also, new artwork, some guy checking out some well Bazaar nice items well, though, stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> checking out the squeeze and the Venge vines to discard. <laughs> <laughs> Then we have for the North American Legacy, cha Legacy uh, Championship, Scrubland, and I... That's because Americans are scrubs. Ooh. Scrubs! Ooh. <laughs> Take it. I, I was always going to make that joke. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing we have Caleb on the cast. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, I guess it's... Uh, it's it's still decent. Uh, that's, that's one I like a little bit less. It's not my favorite, though. Mm, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, you you know you guys don't sound exciting about it anyway. No, no, so, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, are we, are we still talking about the scrapland? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I, I think it's decent. Yeah. It's yeah. Sick, you know. I mean, it's it's a scrapland. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you say one, right? It's, it's a scrapland. I mean, it taps for black and white. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so easy to get even Callum one one on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> <Shit>. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then we have Time Walk uh, for the North American Vintage Championships, uh, and that's my least favorite art rug. It's just like not super interesting to me. I don't know. I like it a lot. Okay. I love the colors. Oh, it, yeah, it has like a. It's almost like a time twisterish because it has mm. like this hourglass and I'm um, holding like an hourglass. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I, I really oh. like it. I love these kind of colors and stuff. It's kind of cool. Yeah. 
Okay, then, Callum, okay. you gotta. We, we, we're gonna make a plan, right? Fine. You're gonna win the North American Winter Championship. Can we You're use get all that. of the shows, loads of money it makes, and then we'll send me over to the North American Winter Championship? I, I think that the expected value would be better if we just like outright bought these paintings. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Oh, all you need to get me is a flight over there and a vintage deck. Jesus Christ. Uh, and a vintage deck. Oh, yeah, that's easy. <laughs> that's the easy part. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Then we have for the European Legacy Championships, we have the Tabernacle at Pendle Whale. Uh, this looks almost like I've been playing a lot of Elden Ring recently. This could yeah. be something out of Elden Ring or, or like Dark Souls. Sure, yeah, it all kind of looks like Hogwarts to me, like a, some sort yeah, of like yeah. a school maybe. I'm well, not, yeah, I'm not super keen on this one myself. It's I like it in a way that it's like a kind of um like horror cartoon sketch thing. Like it's kind of creepy and weird. It doesn't look? I don't know. It looks a bit off. To it me. looks like it's missing something, right? It's just mm. like sitting there in the middle of. I was gonna say a lake, but it looks more like mist. Yeah. But at the same time, I think a, promo, but it's, a tabernacle but it's, painting is just really cool. So it's also cool that to uh, to to see a tabernacle. I think for the first time to see a tabernacle in uh, in one of those um, championships, right? Yeah, I think they're different. Yeah, that, every that's time. always going to be unique cards all the time. Yeah. But um, they, they never repeat one of those cards. Those are literally going to be unique. That's why they're so yeah. so expensive. But choosing tabernacle, I think, is a really cool idea. Like it's yeah, it's definitely like much more of a legacy card than a vintage card. Even though you sometimes see it in vintage, right? As like yeah. a sideboard card. Well, the thing is, like stuff. in vintage, you see it as a two or three off. You know, that's yeah. true. And, and, and in legacy, <laughs> like it, it's interesting, right? Because like the card's not restricted in in legacy, but people always play it as a one off. In vintage, Kai, you're gonna get so many pox people getting angry at you right now. Oh my goodness! Like, oh, wait, wait, wait! Like, <laughs> so wait, what, what's what's the what's the right count for uh, for the pox deck? I don't know. Like, some <laughs> old ones played three. Well, that's decided by your bank account or something. <laughs> God damn it! That's a three off. Are you crazy? Yeah, with herbal. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you even get to tap it for mana, sweet. Mirror universe. Ooh. Why cool. do that? Yeah. And the last one for the European Winter Championships, that's going to be Ancestral Recall. And Hell that's... Yeah. I, I, I like that. The sweet. art's a bit weird to me. I mean, it's, I mean, it's 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 a it's a person in a library, right? With yeah. Like a ghost and things, you know. Yeah, I, mean, I, like, like, I like ghosts. I like Did you like ghosts? Okay. <laughs> I like the idea of it, like a ghost giving this ancestral knowledge to go with the name, obviously. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I think overall my two favorites are definitely the the Gaia's Cradle and the Bazaar of Baghdad. Those are the two ones. So always all the more reason to go to Japan, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh damn. Oh, I, like oh, the, man. I like the Bazaar and the Time Walk most. Yeah. Uh, I, dude, I, I would kill for this guy as cradle. I'm serious. Like, the, oh man, like a part of me r really wants to book a flight right now for for Japan. Imagine winning but, it with Doomsday Book. But okay, like if if anyone is, is really planning on uh on going to that event, please stay there for like another month so we can then f meet up in December. That'd be great. <laughs> and then you can buy anyone. the, the guy's cradle from them. I'm gonna help you buy this thing. <laughs> yeah. The last time, like when when Anarak and I we did the coverage for Eternal Weekend, one of the the winners actually contacted contacted me because it took almost like half a year for the card actually to be shipped to him. But I think that was a customs issue that wasn't on Wizards. Oh wow! Yeah, but in the end he got it. Everybody got their cards. That's great. So yeah, is is, is that gonna be <laughs> guys? We actually we did a two hour episode. Like, I remember like right before the episode, you guys were like, "Oh, we think this is gonna be a two hour episode." And I was like, yeah. "Seriously? I, I thought this it. was gonna be one of the shorter ones." I, I said and again, two like, hours yeah, we, easy. And we did like we did like a five hours a session be and before that. Yeah, and, remember? Right. Oh yeah, and we have to do seven more podcasts now so we can reach all the way into February. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, we're gonna make it work. So. <laughs> <laughs> guys if you want to support our marathon sessions and kai and Callum buying the, the their favorite paintings you can support us on everydayeternal.com no that's very wrong i still haven't released the website damn <laughs> but up until then you can leave a review on apple podcast helps us out also helps other people out uh, discovering the podcast or you can support us on patreon.com slash everyday channel. If you want to so follow us on social media, just find us on at EternalMTG on Twitter and on uh, Instagram. You can find me on It's Julian on Twitch and It's Julian23 on Twitter. Kai, where can people find you? Uh, it's Savatarix on all social media platforms on my homepage, savatarix.com. And Callum? I'm at Callum Smith MTG on Twitter mostly. Awesome. And that's also where people can find Callum's deck list, uh, where that you used to terrorize Europe thus far, right? Yes. I, I think you're pretty locked into playing that in the, Eternal, in, in the European Legacy Masters. Yep. Yep. I'm playing Painter there, unless something crazy happens, like Painter's Band. <laughs> Maybe yeah, Naya Stompy. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> you know what? You know what? I'm, I've got um, White Plume Adventurers and Morlocks in my shopping cart, and I'm coming now. 
I'm gonna buy some too. I'm, go I'm probably gonna speculate on this. Is the first card I'm pr actually gonna speculate on in like a very long time, but like 20 cents that seems so wrong. Mm -hmm. We will see. So, with that, thanks a lot, everybody, for supporting uh, us, for tuning in, especially our Eternal Witness tier supporters Tommy Hinks, Testacular, Sebastian Holaga, Guillaume, Hanawa Elf, Sean Dewey, Francis Coper, Cassandra Davis, Benedict Gruber, and Severin Schwarzhuber. And our Grizzlebrand tier supporters, Victor Benatz, Bachu Bat, Scott Monroe, Jeremy Gates, Hendrik Korkutz, Tom Hepp, Andrew Whitman, and Paragon Games in St. Louis. See you all, maybe, hopefully, at either Four Seasons, any of the Eternal Weekends, uh, even if it's just online. Other than that, uh, hopefully next year. So everybody have a great time. Guys, we actually made it past the two-hour mark once again. So... Yeah, <laughs> I ran out of stuff to do. I just I'm, I'm so dedicated to getting the Naya Stompy thing going. Yep. Hopefully very soon. We'll see you all that. in the uh, the Lost Well taking initiative and stuff. Yeah, take care, guys. Yeah, see you. Bye bye. bye.